Ahí está. Can you all hear me now? <laughs> what can I say? Every single time I do this, there's always something, isn't there? There's just always something. What can I say? <laughs> hello, 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 and welcome all. Um, yeah. Happy Sunday, everyone. Look at you all. Oh, let's have a little look at the chat. How are we all doing? Are we all well? Are we all having a fabulous Sunday? Good. Everyone can hear me now. <laughs> Finally. I was sitting there rabbiting away to myself, but then that's not unusual, is it? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> it's a given. Oh, let's have a look. Hi, Amanda. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the very first live stream. Aren't you a lucky lady? See, you get, you get the usual starting of a stream where, yeah, there's a tech issue for Teresa. And she needs her tech guru to come and help. <laughs> Watching from St. Vincent in the Caribbean where I'm on holiday, stitching flesh cut by it's so Emma. Oh, Sharon, look at you in the Caribbean. You lucky, lucky, do you know what? Now there's something to make me very envious and jealous. I'm very jealous. Who else is on the stream? Who have we got this evening? Hello in the Netherlands. Welcome to the stream. I'm not stitching, but I'm crocheting. Nothing wrong with that. Any craft goes here. We, we, we're we not fussy, are we? Happy Sunday, Teresa. I've got an exciting week ahead. Wednesday is my 25th birthday. Maddie, happy birthday for this week. I hope you have got some amazing plans for your birthday. Hello in Canada, welcome to the stream. <laughs> Tina says, wouldn't be a Teresa stream without issues, totally. Do you know, one of these days I'm going to surprise you all and just go, ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> I should actually know how to do it, in all fairness. It should be one of those things that I know how to do. But it's something to do with the microphones. And because Lauren's recently changed how we have like the desktop music and then we have the microphones... I've not quite got my head around it. I'm an old lady. I need a little time to sort of get my head around it. Yes, happy birthdays, everyone in the chat. Uh, hi in Texas, cleaning craft room. Dawny's crocheting a sweater. Here you find from North Carolina. Welcome to the stream, Linda. I'm cleaning as has been out celebrating the eldest turning five tomorrow. Oh, fabulous, sweetheart. How are you doing, Charlotte? Other than cleaning. I mean, that sucks. I did my cleaning today, I confess. Uh, Jill says, hello, everyone. Back from my first stitching retreat, Stitch in London. It was amazing. Oh, great stuff. Oh, I'm, I'm waiting to see all of the lovely um, floss tube videos about that retreat. Uh, who else have we got? Who else have we got? The chat's moving fast, people. The chat's moving fast. Trees is trying to keep up. Um, we've got South Africa. Welcome to the stream. We've got Oxfordshire. We've got New Hampshire in the USA. Hello from London. Good morning, Trees are from California. Framing up So Halloween projects as I watch. Good stuff. Wonderful. Who else have we got? Maddie says, currently waiting on the fabric for Paris is an open book, but don't know when it's going to arrive. Ordered it last Wednesday from Lakeside Needlecraft. Fingers crossed this week, sweetie. You could have a new start. We've got some knit socking. Winter is coming. Oh, do you know what? I really should get my, my knitting out, but I'm scared because I've got one and, a, one and a bit socks. And to be honest, it's been so long since I actually picked my knitting up. I've sort of forgotten how to do the sock, so... Yeah, and then and then the fact that everyone said to me I was supposed to have measured or counted the rows on the sock, that sort of, yeah, has put me off a little bit. But I love looking at all the knitted stuff. And one of these days, you know what? I've got a very, very, very good friend who, who does amazing knitting and she's made me some socks. And, <laughs> and I think she might be making me something else currently. And she's not local, local. So she's about an hour and a half away. And I basically said to her, 
you need to, I need to go to one of your workshops so I can learn to knit. And she's like, I think you need one on one. So I think we might try and try and align somewhere so that I can go learn to knit properly, people. And then I can show you fabulous knitting <laughs> instead of the holy type. <laughs> Oh, who have we got? I'm cross-stitching a Haid, my granddaughter's up-and-coming wedding. Lovely. Is it your first Haid or have you done more, Catherine? Welcome to the stream, Karen. I'm doing work from... I'm doing work for tomorrow. Tori, what do you mean you're doing work for tomorrow? Tomorrow's tomorrow, not today. <laughs> but I know what you mean. We all have to do it occasionally. I try not to work on the weekend if I can help it. Veronica says, Hi, Teresa. It's just finished baking 52 cinnamon buns. Now I can relax with excellent entertainment and maybe eat. <gasps> cinnamon buns. Oh, see, now you've got me mouth-watering now. Mouth-watering. What a floss up. Welcome to the stream, sweetheart. I'm glad I'm keeping you company with your housework, but after I'm having a new start, Hair's Halloween by Plum Street Samplers, enabled by Crafting Kirsty. She is, she's got a lot to answer for, that young lady. <laughs> Welcome to the stream all. Right, okay, there's loads of you. Um, still backstage, oh, sorry, Luna. Let me put my teeth back in. Still backstreaming on Believe in Santa Dimension Kit. Oh, I've got, do you know what, I've, I, I have to confess people, I've finally finished the actual main stitching of my Welcome Christmas. And I'm in the processes of doing all the black back stitching. And then I can do the beading and then I should have a finish. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping I can find the time to get it all done by the time I do my next monthly update. And I'll have enough finish. <laughs> See, this is why I like these live streams because I share all of the juicy stuff before it's actually got to the juicy stuff for everybody else. <laughs> Uh, Maddie says, I hope so because I'm a little bored currently. Yep, I know what you mean. Um, we've just called down in Texas. Finally, 60s are finally here. Look, be careful what you wish for. We're definitely below 60 and now I feel all sort of... Yeah, I feel wintry. Very wintry over here. So Stacy says, one question, at least for now. I watched your review of your Necessaire stand and love the outfit you wore. It was an animal shirt and pants. It was amazing, so where did you get and still have? Stacy, I will have to get back to you because I need to re-watch that video to see what it was that I was wearing because I'm not 100% sure what it was. I think it might have been my animal print satin or silky satin um, dress shirt and I think I just paired it with some leggings in all fairness. I think that was what it was. Wow, look at you go. You're all, you're all chatting. <laughs> Currently stitching a long dog sampler, legal high. Deborah, fabulous. Jordan, Jordan, hello from New York. Is that how you say it? Jordan, or is it all Jordan, Jordana? It's got an A at the end, sorry. Um, hello from New York. First time I'm actually stitching whilst you're live. Well, welcome to the stream. Aren't you a lucky, lucky person? You get to sit and listen to me rabbit the iron legs off a donkey all night <laughs> did you know you can take a damp sponge and lightly run your floss in the needle it will take the kinks out of the floss so no need to iron them i have after the whole i can't unbobinate and then stick everything on i got millions of people that told me that i must admit i haven't quite got round to actually doing it but uh, it will be something I will try and I will give you my verdict once I once I get there. But I'm just not there. I've not got enough time on my hands to be sorting through my threads. Charlotte says, you're all making me want to have a new start. Not like I don't have enough. Charlotte, if anyone doesn't know, so stitching with the kids around, she does have a floss tube channel. She really should upload a little more frequently, shouldn't you, Charlotte? Um, but she has got so many whips, it's unbelievable. But then she's like the super fast stitcher. So although she's got lots of whips, she, she gets through them like she's a crazy lady. Uh, Linda is stitching on Stitch Mama Darcy's Merry F Christmas. Merry F? Is, is that F as in explicit Fs? <laughs> it's like some little... We don't say the rest of it. 
Uh, hello from Farnham, Hampshire, on the south coast of England. Welcome to the stream. Hi, Rachel. Teresa, how is your Mayari coming along? I want to see it. I'm working on mine. Almost done with the stitching, then on to the beads. Well, you're way ahead of me. That's all I'm going to say. It's funny you should bring up Mayari, because I did actually pull Mayari out yesterday and done a spot of stitching on Mayari yesterday. Um, and when I say a spot, it was literally a little bit of that bit that goes around the top of her head in the crinic. Um Yeah. Everything's getting neglected, people. What can I... It's, it's just... It's me. I, I like all the starts and I love all the stitching, but then inevitably there's never enough time to stitch on everything. I really do... Actually, it's funny you should say that because I was one of the things I was going to talk to you all about was I was thinking about I might need to redo the whip go 2023 this year because it did hold me very much accountable for those really really sort of left alone projects and the ones that i want to make focus pieces so um, we'll, we'll chat about that shortly um i'm cross stitching a cottage lovely emma starting the fourth row of louisa collinmore oh i don't know that one very random question, but I've got a new work from home job and need a chair. What office chair do you have? Oh, now you're asking. Um, oh, I don't know. I tell you what, ping me an email. So in the description box of this stream, or any, any of mine, ping me an email. And what I'll do is I will search back and I will let you know. Same for the question on the shirt the shirt and what outfit I was wearing, if you can send me an email, because although I'm on the live and I can see your channel names, I don't know how to contact you. So if you send me an email asking me the same question, then then I can get back to you with the answer. Um, Miss Jensen, welcome to the stream. I'm doing some hard hanger stitching. <gasps> yeah, I, I, I need to get back to doing one of those. I think that that might be another new start because I haven't got any, have I? Although, the Chatelaine's got specialty stitches in, hasn't it? So, maybe I just need to get the Chatelaine finished. Get even in the park done, and then I might need to do the, um, you know, the um, Autumn Promise that I did. It, I've got the Companion Priest, which is Autumn Secrets, I think it is. Um, I think that is my next one. That is my next one. Right, can I just check, people? The music in the background... Is it low enough? Because when I listened back to the video or the live that we did last Sunday, I thought the music was a smidgen too high. Just my take. I might be totally wrong. And this, this week, we have got festive Halloween music. I have gone all out. I downloaded my spooky dooky Halloween music, especially for this live. Oh, wow, there's so many of you. You totally enabled me last week, Teresa. I had to go and purchase a Chatelaine evening in the park, to be precise. You just call me Silver, by the way. <laughs> I couldn't possibly be the person that made you go and buy that. Surely. Do you know what? There's so many people that want to do it, though, and so many people that have gone and got it. It's like, yeah, just, just why not? It's the best. I think if anyone turned around and said to me, what is... What is not even the best project that I've got, but what is the most like the one that makes me makes me go warm and fuzzy inside every time I pick it up? It will be the evening in the park, even though I don't necessarily get to it as much as I would like. And even though I say I'm going to make it a focus, I do a bit and stop a bit. It's still the one that makes me go gooey and a bit warm and fuzzy. And in all fairness, most of the time I have it set up on the frame. And it sat there. So when I'm not stitching that, I just tend to find I sit there looking at it anyway. So <laughs> I know it's not finished, but it looks good even when it's not finished. So, hi, Justin. Welcome to the stream. Uh, my, I may have, to, I may have it to the live two weeks running. I hope you're all good. Sitting here stitching on Blue Dragon Heaven and Earth. Glorious. Okay, so little explanation so i don't often wear one of these neck attires do i she says i'm gonna move it over there a little bit um there there is a reason for this and would you believe it i got shingles <laughs> so what day was it monday or tuesday of last week i was in work 
it was really stressful. I felt a little bit unwell for a day or so before, but I just thought it was where I was tired and I was under the weather and, you know, I was commuting into London. So I was like, that's why I don't feel great. Um, but then on the Tuesday, Tuesday daytime and then into Tuesday evening, I noticed that my neck was like burning and tingling. And I was thinking like, oh, but I was thinking I was having a lady hot flush. And I was like, I know everyone turned around and said that, that, you know, when we get daytime hot flushes, because I've never, in, in all fairness, I've never had a daytime flush. I've always had night sweats. So I was sitting there thinking I was having a flush. And I was like, I know everyone turned around and said, you get really hot. But I was like, I'm, this is burning. But then instead of just burning, it was like tingling as well. Went to bed Tuesday night, woke up in the middle of the night and my, my neck was on fire. And I was like, oh, what is going on? Went into the bathroom and I had this, this rash. Like you were, and I was like, oh dear. So in the morning when I got up, it was that bad and I couldn't bear anything touching on it. And I was like, what am I gonna do? So I had to put a scarf on to go to work. Everyone was saying that I was lock, rocking this amazing look with this big shawl thing that I'd slapped around my, slapped around my shoulder. Um, but it, it wasn't that it was a fashion moment. It was, it was that I was doing everything to hide me from there to there. Um, I showed it to my to my boss and he was like, oh, he said, oh, I think you might need to go and get some Puritan for that, like antihistamine. So I was like, yeah, I said, I have no idea what it is. Went to pharmacy. Um, and said, like, because they've got all these different ones. You've got Puritan and you've got Avril or Ad, Advil or something. I don't know that. But at the counter, there were so many of them that I turned around and said, I've got this rash on my neck. I said, can you suggest which one would be best? And she was like, show me the rash. Well, because as soon as I showed her the rash, she was like, well, I'm not giving you anything for that. She said, I think you need to go and see a GP. She said, a doctor needs to look at that. Luckily for me, part of my Buka scheme I get a private GP. So I came out of Bootsy's, made a made an online appointment for a video call with the GP, had my my consult with my GP within the hour, um, and she turned around and said, you need to go home. She said, because she said, although shingles isn't massively contagious to most people, anyone that hasn't had chicken pox, small children, the elderly, um, and people with um, immune deficiency, she said, "You can give them shingle. Uh, you can give them chicken pox from having shingles." She said, "If it had been somewhere where I could have covered myself up, not touched it, not scratched it, it would have been fine. I probably could have got away with being in the office. But because it's on the on my neck and it's not something that I could cover, she suggested that I went home. So, needless to say, I don't think my boss was very pleased with me. So, but since then, it's just progressively got." more and more so last the end of last the end of this week it was driving me nuts but it has sort of calmed down a little bit enough that i can get this on it is a silky scarf so although it's on and it's touching it it's not nothing scratching it and to be honest it's it's painful and itchy anyway so yeah welcome to my world people welcome to my world <laughs> oh dear oh no hubby had it and it was so dreadful and painful. Cortisone patches help with the pain and itching. Ask your doctor. Well, I've got antivirals. Um, so the GP organized for me to have these antivirals. Wow, wow. They're 800 milligram. They're huge, they're like horse tablets. I have to prepare myself just to be able to take them. And I have to take them five times a day. Um, and they assure me that that will make it so that it won't last as long and the idea is that it, it won't you won't get a mass like a big case of it so i'm hoping that by middle of next week it will start to really settle down is what i'm hoping for oh oh no not shingles had that twice in my life i feel for you yeah yeah still that is it's not I'm, I'm not enjoying the moment i'll be fair with you Only shingles thought you had a hickey under there. Veronica! <gasps> oh, have you know being a married woman that I am after so many years? The hickey days are very over. <laughs> <laughs> you wait till my husband gets back from Italy and I tell him that they thought that I had a hickey on my neck and that's why I was wearing my flash little scarf. <laughs> Too funny. Oh... 
Shingles can be painful, but get shingles shot here in the UK as an oldie. Yep, yeah, they do do it for oldies, but apparently they don't do it for young people. So, right. You're not here to just look at me and listen to me waffle, are we? We're here to look at the stitching. So, shall we? Sh shall we head down? And let's, let's see what we've got going on today. Dun, dun, dun. As you can see, we are back with Greta. I thought because it's Christmas, Christmassy, Halloweeny, and it's still Halloween, we need to we need to stick with the theme. Or at least that's what I think. I think we need to stick with the theme. So let me just let me just make sure that I've got right. Someone asked me how the girls are. The girls are fine. They're actually well, one was there. They were both there, but now one's just got up. So would you believe it? I'm going to have to get up and open the door now because one wants to go outside. Do you want to go out there? Go on, out you go. I'm going to leave the door ajar because hubby's away. Oh, she says, without smashing everything to pieces. Hubby is away in Italy, so hopefully the only noise that can be heard will be Lauren. And she's more mindful when, when streaming because she also streams. So she knows how annoying it can be when someone sits there making a ton of noise whilst you're trying to do a live stream with the people. With my people. So there you go, people. You've got an idea of how my week's been. But at least this weekend, you know, I've tinkered a little bit in the garden because when I was out in the garden, it, it the air that was blowing on it, when. The first couple of days, the air blowing on it actually made it worse. It made it more painful. But over the last day or so, it's not been quite so sort of alive, let's say. We just call it alive. So, so yeah. So, I'm hoping that it's, that it's going to settle itself down a little bit. Now, I've gone ahead before the stream and done a bit of an outline here. So I think the plan is I'm going to fill in this bit and then down here there's some more bits and pieces. So we're just going to see how we do, see how much stitching Teresa can get done. And I'm working from home tomorrow, obviously, because I'm not allowed to go into the office. So I'm going to have to um, work from home. So at least I haven't got to worry about getting up in the morning and and going and doing all the things, getting myself up at, I mean, I say get up at a ridiculous time, but even though I'm not going into London, I still get up really early. I'm just one of those really early people, I think. Does it seem to be a bit wobbly? I'm gonna move this over a little, hold on. There, oh, now the camera's in the wrong place. My first live and don't know if I should just chat or stitch. Well, I'm doing a lot of chatting, so I think everyone else should do a lot of chatting as well. Right, I'm just going to move this camera. This might make you a little seasick, people, so I'm sorry in advance. There we go. See, now you've got an idea of how high up the camera is. It's so high, I'm like, I have to stand up. At least I don't need a stool to stand on. <laughs> Hi, Rhonda from North Carolina. Um, Teresa, if it's not one thing, it's another. Definitely, I'm starting to feel like that. I feel like one of those, one of those people that's got like endless things that that happen to them. No matter how good I try and be and how healthy I try and be, it never works. But there's always something else. But hey, there's worse things. There's worse things that could have happened. That's for sure. Right, let's let's get some stitches in here, shall we? Um, looky, 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 such pretty colours. <laughs> it's coming along nicely. It's coming along nicely. Although I haven't really I haven't touched this since the last live. I literally all I done this afternoon whilst I was watching hubby racing because his is televised. Um. I was sitting on the sofa this afternoon after I'd been out in the garden and I thought, I know what I do. Because I always struggle with the counting and focusing on the stream and chatting, I thought if I do a little bit of an outline as a worst case scenario, if, if I don't get much more done after this and I go down here and I'm struggling to 
sort of do the whole multitasking it won't matter too much because at least I put a, another block of colour in or at least that's how I'm selling it to myself hi Deborah, welcome to the stream from Virginia what is the needle minder oh the needle minder let me show you let's move him over here so this is this is my new little friend so these are so you know you've got clay by Kim it's it's a similar thing um, but it's a UK company and it's called Agnes needle minders she does the same thing where she 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 makes a batch of them um, we get a notification before they go live and then yeah and then it's the first come first serve and you have to be all over it so I've got a few of them now I've got this one I recently just got another one but they are absolutely gorgeous I do like to treat myself every once in a while with the with the Agnes needle minder but they're always so so cute so yeah anyone that's interested um, I would say I'd give you I'd put the link up but that would require me to I could couldn't I I could hold on let me I wonder if I can join my own stream on my phone and link it in the in the chat box unless anybody else is anybody else in the UK that knows Agnes Needleminder's Etsy store location that they could post in the chat for anyone that's interested to join the join the fun but what I like about it is once once you're you know what once once you're sub sort of sub subscribed to her it's not a subscription um, she's got a website when you go on there and you register for the newsletter you get an email to let you know when it's gonna when she's gonna go live with them and when they're gonna get posted onto Etsy so that that way you can you can jump on there at exactly the right time and get lucky and also once you've purchased from her she normally I think once once you're on a website thing you get um, like a little discount she normally gives you a discount code to put in on your purchase so that you you get a, a discount at the same time love 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 um let's have a look do you use your cross stitch planner still it's been a while since you've mentioned it wonder if you still use it what on my on my ipad on my ipad yes i do because that's where i log when i've stitched what i've stitched um and then that gets transferred into my excel spreadsheet so I, I still use mine, but I know that everyone loves those, um, is it year of books? I did try the year of books, but in all fairness, because I stitch sort of all over the house, I've got like one project upstairs in the bedroom and then I've got another one downstairs in the living room. And then obviously I've got my train projects. Oh, why is that? Come on, lay down, lay down. Um, once I've once you have the book in a certain place i'm the sort of person that i'll leave it downstairs and then forget to take it upstairs with me so then i forget to log what i've stitched whereas on my ipad because i always take my ipad to bed with me because who doesn't come on the ipad has more reason to be in the bedroom than my husband does so because i <laughs> because i um I take my iPad to bed with me and, and I do sort of a bit of Googling or a bit of email stuff from bed. I normally just go straight on to my little planner and just mark on there on that week, you know, I'll, I'll write down what I've stitched that day. And then that's how I track what I've stitched. And then all that then gets at the end of every week. Normally on a Friday when I'm working from home, I'll open the Excel spreadsheet and update it with the information so yeah I, st I still use mine and love love it so far it's the best thing for me because it's the iPad goes where I go books don't journals don't the Excel spreadsheet I love because it gives me the overview for the whole year and I can see it's all just about the projects and not about like stash or 
or anything else. Um, also, what I like about it is when I'm sitting there watching Floss Tube and I get enabled, I tend to make the notes in the corner so that when I see something I really like, it gets written down. Because if you're anything like me, I'll sit there and watch Floss Tube, like if I'm getting ready for work in the morning or, or whatever. And then I'll see some, some, someone will show something and I'm like, oh, I love that, that's lovely. And I think, oh, I must, I must remember to write that down and, and who, who showed it. And then, yeah, and then literally within a couple of minutes, the moment's gone and I've completely forgotten that I needed to write something down. So at least with my, with my planner, it's right there. So if I'm on floss tube, I just open another, you know, like where you can slide your finger up and open two things at the same time. I normally do that. And then just quickly mark in there what it was that someone showed. And then I normally say who showed it. So yeah, I, I find it really, really helpful for me personally. And also, you know, like when I mention people on floss tube, but about something that they did that I like or something that I saw that I liked, Normally, it's because I, I would never remember that sort of information. In all fairness, if I didn't write that down in my in my handy dandy planner. But I think it depends on whether you're a digital person or not. If you like, if you like a pen and paper, and that's your easy go to, then then yeah. But to be honest, nothing that I do is on pen and paper. So when I do my floss tube updates like my monthly updates and I'm talking about my projects all of that's done on OneNote so again that's all done either from the iPad or the PC my Excel spreadsheet when I'm trying to work out you know how many days I've stitched on what so that I can tell you how many days I've touched on something again that's all online and because I put everything on my OneDrive and my OneDrive is connected to my PC but it's also connected to my iPad it doesn't matter where I am or what I'm doing, I never miss anything because it's it's all been put on the same the same document. But the planner is one of those things that, yeah, book was, book's no good to me because I never take the book wherever I go. So therefore, it, it I'd only capture some of the information wherever the book was. It won't be something that I take to bed with me and move around the house, but for some people, that's what they do, and that's that's what they like. Um, right, sorry, I've been chatting a bit too long and the chat's just flown off. Let's have a look. How could you not go to Italy? Would be so sad. <laughs> Where in Italy, I'm loving the colours in your project. Stacy. thank you so, so much. Um, the problem is when he goes to Italy, he goes with his pals. So there's, um, yeah, and they hire a car and they're out in the middle of nowhere. So it was not like there would be a hotel or somewhere that I could go and sort of hang out for the weekend. I mean, I say that, I think some of the places I probably could, but then we'd have to have a hotel that's close by and normally he's in the middle of nowhere. He's not in, he's not somewhere nice. And then he's racing all day and then we did race pals all night. So I would basically be spending the entirety of my time in Italy on my own. And really? I mean, look, if I'd have gone to Italy, you wouldn't be getting a live stream now. That's, that's the reality. You wouldn't be getting a live stream. I wouldn't be getting any stitching done. My babies would be missing me terribly. And I quite like being at home. Do you know what? I've been so productive. Even though I felt like rough i've been so productive all my housework's been done the gardening's been done the leaves have been collected um the beds are all prepped for the mulch to turn up on tuesday um my wallflowers and winter winter stuff has been put in um all the paths have been cleaned and cleared the greenhouse has been sorted out the housework's been done i've done some stitching yeah I'm never really quite as productive when Darren's here. <laughs> In a nice way. <clears throat> In a nice way. Um, your stitching is looking good. Thank you so, so much. I've learned a lot about stitching from you. I like your style. Christy, thank you so much. I had to frog a lot lately. Firstly, 
I made a mistake on my lavender and lace and then I sorted it out. Mistake on a mini hay that has gone wrong. Feel a bit deflated at the moment. Silver, don't let it get to you. It's it's all about, you know, we, we all have to go through a little bit of pain of frogging and we all make mistakes. And in all fairness, if it's something that you can fudge, if 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 you find that it, it puts you off and it deflates you, doing all the frogging, for some people their their requirement for it to be exactly as per the chart is an absolute necessity. And I get that. But for me, I tend to find that if it's something that I can fudge, I will fudge it just to get around it. And if I can't, then I'll frog. But then what I'll do is I'll frog I'll frog whatever I'm frogging and then put it in time out for a little while. So that at least when I, I won't, I never actually leave anything that needs to be done. Because I know that if I put it down, I won't pick it back up again. Because it'll irritate me. Because I know I've got to sort, fix out the, fix the problem before I can go back to it. So if, if something needs fixing, it either has to be fixed there and then. Or I'll fudge it. Personally. But we're, we've all been there, sweetheart. You're not, you're not on your own. Chloe says, hi, Teresa. I have cross-stitch pattern. And I was wondering if I could send to you. Angel of fantasy. I won't stitch it, so I would send it. I'm from Oregon. Oh, Chloe, that's lovely. That's a lovely, lovely gesture. Are you sure you won't stitch it? Is it, is it a, like a PDF or is it, is it something that you're going to need to put in the post, my love? You'll have to let me know. But yep, I'm, I'm all up for anything that someone isn't going to stitch. And if it's not something that I would stitch, I can always do like a giveaway on the channel and let someone that would really, really like to stitch something stitch it. Because that's the thing, isn't it? Stitching is one of those things where you're like, it's a personal preference. So I, 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 I would probably have to see the chart I haven't actually seen the chart. Maybe I'll have to go and Google that. I need to make a note of that, actually. Shall I make a note of it first? Chloe, before you actually think about sending it to me, let me make a note and I'll have a little look and see if it's something that I'll stitch. If it's not something that I'll stitch, then I could always see whether we can do a giveaway on the channel if you just want to get rid of it. But if not, I don't, would hate for you to give it to me and then and then I say, well, actually, I wouldn't stitch on that because that's that's not fair. So let me have a little look. What was it called again? Oh. Angel of Fantasy. You'll have to let me know what brand it is as well. Because I might need a bit more information than that to, to see it. Are you back to dancing now? Um, no. No, I'm not. And would you believe my... the the guy, the guy that I, I used to dance with, um, he's actually, he's not gone back either. So, yeah, I'm like, I'm not sure that I would just want to go and, I mean, one of the reasons that Darren never had a problem with me dancing was because I was dancing with, with a gentleman that would never be interested in me. Let's put it like that. So, and he was such a beautiful dancer. And Darren didn't have a problem with that. But I think I'm not sure how Darren would feel. I don't think he'd have a problem with the ballroom. Because that's quite, you know. But the minute we go to like the the salsa, the the rumba, the cha-cha. Where it's a bit, bit more hands-on. I don't think Darren would like just anyone dancing. Or me just dancing with anyone. So, yeah. I have to take that into consideration. Because... You do spend a lot of time with the partner dancing. And it is very close and personal. So, and for me, I always find that it's... The partnering is, is key as well. I think you need to feel really, really comfortable with the person you're dancing with. And for me, I'm not always comfortable. I, I think the thing that put me off was I went to salsa, like a salsa classes club thing in London before I was doing the ballroom dancing um, and in all fairness most of the guys that were there were just there to pull someone so 
although it started out that they were just sort of making it like, oh yeah, we just want to learn how to dance salsa. Um, it was very apparent that it wasn't just that they wanted to learn salsa. And then they done like a, a night thing, like a, an open night thing. And my husband came along and was watching and people didn't realize he was my husband, or at least the guys that were dancing with me didn't realize he was my husband. He didn't like it. He didn't like it one bit. He said they were too flash and too, yeah, a bit too handy for Darren's liking. So, so yeah, so it, the reason that Dancing with Tish was so great was that, well, one, he was my teacher as well. So he was there just doing his job. Um, but secondly, for Darren, I think it put him, it put him at, in a happy place because he knew that, you know, I wasn't, I was never going to be one of Tish's sought afters, if you know what I mean. Not that I would anyway. I'm a bit old for all that. And I did say to my husband, you know, that doesn't really sort of make me feel good that you think that I, I wouldn't, you know, that I would do anything wrong. And it's not, it's not about you doing anything wrong. He said it's just what, well, I think he thinks, he said, well, as he put it, I think like a man. He said, so I know. And I was like, all right, okay. You think like a man and all men think like you. Is that right? But apparently that's, and as, as he said, and he made a very valid, a very valid argument because he turned around and said to me, because I argued with him about it for a little while, to be honest. Um, and he turned around and said, okay, he said, let me put it like this. He said, what about if I went dancing lessons? He said, and there was this really young, fit, 20-something-year-old, um, you know, and they were doing something where it was all handy-pandy and he had to spend lots of time with her. And he said, how would you feel about it? And when you, when you say it like that, I'm like, actually, you're probably right. I don't think I would like that very much either. So, so yeah. So whoever I, whoever I dance with, the, the, the process has to be that, one, I have to be comfortable with, but there is always the question of is Darren comfortable with that person dancing with me especially on like I say the things like the salsa and the the rumba because they're they're much more touchy-feely let's say um where are we I love the colors on your stitching I get up an hour and a half before work every day. I try to cross stitch at that time. That that is a great idea. Although I must admit, when I get up in the morning, I'm I'm not normally cross stitching. I get up in the morning and normally do my housework, or I might go out in the garden, or go through my emails. But then, yeah, I can't really get when I'm working in London. I can't really get up much earlier than I'm then I get up anyway because I'm up at five and I just have enough time to get up have a coffee um, get myself ready for work maybe put a load of washing on sort the girls out before I leave and then that's me off off to work okay where are we Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna scroll to the end of the chat because there's a lot of Oh Karen! Hi Karen, I didn't even see you on the stream, my love. Lovely that you're here. Oh Karen's got a lot to answer for. I'll tell you in a moment. Let me read the rest of this chat so that I've caught up. Gosh, you've been a busy bee. Hi Isabel, my lovely. Yes, I have been a very busy bee. Nick says, hi Teresa, I've been following for years, but finally managed to catch a live. Yay, welcome to the stream. <laughs> oh, do you load the pattern for this project into Pattern Keeper? No, so I'm not using Pattern Keeper for this, but I am using my good notes. So because I basically copied, I copied the chart onto, um, onto a file and then I've added it onto my, oh, where is it? onto my good notes so patterns like this i will always use oh sorry sounding a bit croaky now i'll always use my good notes it's just a thing that i do i 
in all fairness, I don't think, I don't think they actually, I don't, I don't think the uh, Bella Filipinas go on the pattern keeper. I could be mistaken. Um, my understanding is there's only certain charts that would, and then you might need, if you did, you might need to fiddle about with the settings a little bit, and I'm, I'm not down for that. My good notes was what I started using back in the day before Pattern Keeper ever came about. So yeah, so for me, it's it's always worked. And anything that doesn't go in, anything that doesn't naturally go into Pattern Keeper that doesn't need to be fiddled with, um, I will always just put it on good notes and do it that way. <clears throat> Um, where am I? Where am I? Um, um, oh wow, the chat's on the move, people. The chat's on the mood. Oh, what was this? The only specialty sister I know is the French knot. Well, at least you know the French knot. I can't even do a French knot. Hi Karen, caught your hard hanger stitch along. Loved it. Yep, anyone that anyone that wants to learn how to do hard hanger, definitely go and head over and see Karen the Needlebug. Um, she's got like a is it book of knowledge? Is that what they're called? The book of knowledge? And she's doing a hard hanger series where she sort of teaches you how to do all of the different stitches and shows you it on screen. And she's a great teacher. A great, great teacher. She's a great person. Apart from when she's being naughty and enabling me, which we'll get to once I've finished all of these comments. Karen, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, if a man on a galloping horse going by won't notice a mistake, you can leave it. <laughs> oh, I do love that. I do love that. That saying. That is like the best saying ever. And I'm all down with that very much down with that um, of course Treasy you have actually made over 280 stitches very happy doing your live stream I really enjoy being on here I'm truly a lot of fun with my with myself Candy well what can I say what can I say you know what you all sit there and say that I've made you all happy but you are the ones that make me very happy could you imagine if I came on and I had like no one no one turned up for one of my live streams that it wouldn't be much fun for me it wouldn't be a live stream would it for me i'd be like oh when there's no one there so yeah so no oh what am i doing what how did that happen see this is what happens when i'm not paying any attention to what i'm doing um yeah i i have to say a huge thank you to all of you who who always come and join my lives give me the talking points to talk to you because well, you know what it's like. This is the reason that I don't do very many just standard stitch with me. is because it's it's knowing what to say. When there's no one to engage with, or there's no question, or there's no... There's just no anything, is there? It's just me making some stuff up. <laughs> and I do. Sometimes I sit there and write notes. And I write, like, so if I've had comments on certain videos, I'll, I'll write notes and think, oh, maybe I could talk about that. But because I'm one of those really expressionate people that when I'm trying to explain to someone how I do something or what I do, the easiest way for me to explain it is, is actually do it. Because then it makes sense in my head of how I explain it. But to try and explain something when I'm just sitting there stitching something else, is it's almost impossible. I'm not very good at that. I'll be fair. I'll be completely honest. Not very good at that. But... That's why I love coming on the lives because on the lives you you all give me someone to talk to. And it's it is really heartwarming knowing that there's that many of you that have took time out of your day to come and hang out with me. You know, depending on what you're doing, I mean it doesn't make any difference. I you know like like there's people that are doing their housework and they're still watching. And then and then you've got people that are baking. Ah, oh, so you keep do you know what? Right now, I could kill for a bit of chocolate. I don't know why. I don't know why that's just popped into my head. To the point that, you know, you know when you're sort of sitting there thinking, maybe when the live stream's finished, because I know I haven't got to get up and go to work in the morning, I could jump in the car and go to the petrol station or the garage and go and, go and get some chocolate. 
But then I'm supposed to be being good. So I'm not supposed to be going and buying chocolate. It's the cinnamon buns. See, the, you planted the seed. Buns, cakes, biscuits, sweeties. It's there. I have it in my mind now. Um... Morning, trees are from Hunt Valley, New Zealand. North Island Stitcher, welcome to the stream. Um, working on my first haid was enabled by you, but loving every minute. So glad I found your channel. Oh, I'm so, so pleased. What what project are you working on? What's, what's, what's the new haid? If I've missed or if I've messed up on my cross stitch, have to unfrog it. My OCD does my head in, so just can't leave it. I have to sort it out then and there. Emma, I feel I know I know what you mean, and I feel your pain. But although I have the same OCD propensity, not to the point that if it's if it's not if I can't just jiggle it and fudge it then then I will frog it but if there's an option to jiggle it then I'll jiggle it and I'll make it unique because just because something's charted a certain way doesn't mean it has to be identical to the chart as long as you're happy with it as long as you're happy with it that's all that matters Hello, Teresa. I'm glad to have caught your live hugs from Texas. Hi, Norma. Welcome to the stream, my love. Sometimes I frog, sometimes I don't. It just depends on how much the particular mistake bothers me, as well as whether or not it interferes with other parts of the design. I couldn't agree more. In fact, that's I think that's one of the key things. If it is going to interfere with the whole design, then you have really no choice, do you, other than to frog it. But if it's really not going to make that much of a difference and only you would be the person that would be aware of it or fellow stitchers that have already stitched the pattern that maybe could spot where you've done something different, I really don't think it matters. And in all fairness, I mean, I put my I put my, my stitch in all over Floss Tube and I can honestly say to you that I don't think there is any project, finish, whip, that I currently am either working on or have worked on that hasn't got at least one mistake in it. And most of the time I will fudge it rather than fix it. Just saying. And you you all sit there and go, oh, your projects are so lovely. They might be lovely, but that doesn't mean that they're true and correct as per the chart. As many of you know, I mean, I will sit and point out the mistakes because, yeah, because I can. If I remember them, but the amount of times I've got to the end of a project and I haven't even remembered where the mistakes are. You know, even if I sit there and look at it, I wouldn't necessarily remember where the mistakes are or where I fudged it. Because sometimes you can do that. You can just fudge it in a spot that you'd sit there thinking, oh, there's no way you can fudge that, but you can. And then, you know, if you've got one of the projects like me, where it's like a project that is, yeah, a long time in the making, let's say, it really doesn't matter. Those those mistakes, to the point that I get to the end of the project, and I, although I might remember that there was a mistake, I would not necessarily be able to sit there and pick out exactly where it is. But for those that really can't bear the thought of it being wrong, I do I do get it. But I think it is a personal a personal preference thing, isn't it? Right, where are we at on this chat? Oh no, can oh I'm gonna need to make someone admin to get rid of these hide user on this chat, these these pop-up things tinder hot xyz get adult dating site why do i look like i want to date i'm stitching why would i need to date anyone not that it matters because yeah i'm married very married how do i get them off it says hide user on the channel remove report 
I'm going to hide user. There we go. Let's see if we can get rid of them. There we go. Oh, and there's more of them. Why is there more of them? I'm going to have to get someone to be an admin on my channel so that they can go and take them off. I'm fudge it over fix it. <laughs> yep, feeling that. Happy to finally catch a live rather than just watching the replay. <laughs> Welcome to the stream. I'm going to call you Wicked because Wicked Chords. Wicked Chords? But we'll just call you Wicked. There we go. Strange, I keep getting little years. Don't know what's going on with my temperature gauge. Change to a light weight, three quarter sleeve. Right. Strange, I keep getting little warm surges. I have been, I've been over hot flushes for years. Don't know what's going on with my temperature gauge. Changes to the lightweight three quarter length sleeve. Candy, do you know what? My mum still has what we call mini flushes, even to this day. And my mum's 70. She'll kill me for putting this all over floss tube. Sorry, mum. I know she watches some of these back, so I'll apologize now. How old is my mum? I'm 47, so my mum is 77. And she still, she still has moments where she gets a, and it's not like a full on, it's not like the full on flush. It's, it's more of a, you know, a moment of warmth where she has to be like, Phew! and and then literally it's as over as fast as it started. So it doesn't hold the rest of us with much hope, does it? That, you know, we'll get to an age where it goes away. <laughs> Right, let me, let me start marking because I'm getting a bit worried that I'm getting a bit close to the bottom and I'm not really paying attention to what I'm, what I'm stitching. So let me just, marking with my left hand is, is new. I've not done this bit before. Okay, so where are we at? Yep, I'm about there. So let's mark that. Oops, no. And then move that to there. Right, okay. I'm going to start needing to pay attention to the chart now. <laughs> Just saying. Just saying. Um... Charlotte says, I'll happily kick the dating site bottoms. <laughs> I might have to do that because because I can't multitask a million times. I might need to for those of you that come and join me regularly and you're like my regular my regulars, you could come and do like my modding. They call it mods, your mods for the channel so you can kick people out and put people in time out if they're bad or they say nasty things to me. Although, do you know what? I think I've been quite lucky. I've not had anyone actually join the live and put any nasty things in the chat but then <laughs> well I say that <laughs> I don't actually think I'd know because the chat moves so fast half the time I'd, I'd be oblivious I think <laughs> and they could say what they like I won't see it you'll see it I won't see it Rhonda says trees I hate to say this but the music is getting louder is it is it too loud Tell me if it's too loud. If it's too ha too loud, I can I can put it down. In fact, let's just should we should we just put it down just a little bit? What about now? Can you still hear it or has it disappeared completely? <laughs> Judith says, love your videos. Thank you so much, Judith. Teresa, I've reported the date, got it removed. Wonderful. So Catherine says, I'm working on Medusa by Pinkney, Maya and the Galaxy Girl by Harrison Molly. They are they are for my girls for Christmas. Lovely. I've got I've got some fur in my mouth. Hold on. Fine here, not too loud. Can just about hear it. Yeah, can still hear it. Here. 
not here. <laughs> it's good. Hey Gina, welcome to the stream, my lovely. Yes, can still hear the music. Fine. Just as long as you can hear the um the, the spooky the spooky music. I spent a good few hours just sitting there loading that. Because yeah, I had to download every single one of them to make it into a playlist. And I, I was loving it. I was just like, do, 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 do. And then like some of it got a bit dark and I was like, oh, it's a bit scary. It's a bit scary, that. I mean, really, I should have more of a dark, a dark Halloween stitching. But that's not really my bag, is it? So Greta's about as dark as we're going to go. We're not going any darker or Halloweenier than, than Greta. There'll be no skulls or tombstone, tombstones and yeah, no. We'll stick with a very pretty witch, I think. What do we think? Crazy cat lady, hi Teresa. Am I late been watching Strictly Results? I won't give anything away. No, don't tell me. Don't tell me because me and hubby watch that together and I'm not allowed to watch it until he gets home. So we'll watch it together. So no spoilers. No spoilers for the Strictly. Where do you find it? What, my music? Background music is just fine. Silver says, Miss Jensen, I'm 42, and that sounds awful. Oh. I'm assuming there's a bit of chat I've missed there. Black and purple are good. Don't stitch Halloween, just just fall. Yep. I've, I've, well, this I think this is... Is this my first Halloween stitch? I think it is. I don't think I've ever stitched on anything Halloween. I stitched on Autumn, didn't I, by the Cricut Collection, but that's that's more full. But it was a bit spooky because it had, it had like a little spider hanging in it. But that's that's about it, I think. Okay, so people, mum, I need now need to um, start counting properly because it doesn't all need um, filling in now. This is this is where it starts to get a little tricky for me. There's a doggy outside my door. I can hear it tippy tapping around out there. You could always play the Monster Mash. <laughs> Only if you promise that you all dance to it. <laughs> Teresa, I will keep an eye on the chat for you. Make sure no stupid people on here. Thank you, Emma. I very much appreciate that. I don't think we get stupid people on the chat very often, do we? I sit there and say we. It is the royal we because it is us. It's not. It's not me. It's, it's it's all of us. We don't want idiots. Don't want idiots on the stream, do we? And especially those. I mean, I don't know what those pop up things are. But the uh, they're, they're not ads. I don't know what they are. That that I think that is a person that actually pops them on there, or it's it's a bot. I think Lauren called it a bot. Or something. Hang on. One, two, three, four. Greta Goldblum reminds me of Samantha out of Bewitched. Oh, do you remember that program? That was a great program, wasn't it? It was great. In fact, maybe I should go back and watch it because one thing I've noticed just recently, all the programs that I absolutely loved to watch in my young younger days, let's say, I'm always like, oh, they're like the best, they're legend. And sometimes I've gone back and watched them now and I'm like, wow. Wow, they're really low budget, aren't they? <laughs> Do you remember, like, Happy Days? Happy Days, love that. Saw Happy Days the other day on some sort of replay, or I can't even remember where I saw it. Started watching it, and I was like, did I really watch this when I was a kid? And I was, like, obsessed with it. It was like, I'd never miss a Happy Days. So, yeah. It's... But then there are other ones where I would, I would sit and watch them over and over again. Like... So, prize example, what are some of the old films that we used to watch or the old things that we used to watch? So, Top Gun, of course, with with Tom Cruise. Um, Weird Science, love that. 
The one where they wear bras on their heads. Love that one. Hold on. I need to count. Where am I at? Uh, that's one. That's two. So we're on two again. That's two. Okay, so we need some four. four. Hold on. I'm, I'm just going to have to get to where I'm at and then and then really sort of work out where I am on this chart because I'm just crazily stitching away here to my heart's content. Um, lovely witch, there are some on YouTube. Oh, are they really? I'll have to go back and watch them. Big Halloween stitch, stitched here. Biggest project was Spooky House by X's and O's. Turned out awesome. Oh, see, I love looking at other people's. That there was um. Oh, what is that chart? Oh, people. Um, it's the one where there's a horse on it. It's like it's like a Quaker. It reminds me of a Quaker, and it's it's got a bit of everything on it. And I keep looking at it and I think, oh, it's really lovely. But would I really stitch on it? Someone's going to know what one it is. I need to... Oh. Do you know what? I'm going to have to open a new box on a, on my PC so I can show it to you. So that I can I can share it as a picture. Because I'm trying to remember what it is. But Breakfast Club, Pretty in Pink, 16 Candles, Roxy. Yeah, there's my girl. She's, she's all over it. Feel the same way about shows I always loved and now not for me anymore. Yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely a thing. Janet, Weird Science, love it. Used to love Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Tried to rewatch. hold on, the chat moved. <laughs> Tried to rewatch. couldn't do it. Do you know what? I've not watched Buffy the Vampire Slayer for ages. Maybe I should go and try <laughs> and see what happens. Um... Risky Business, Ferris Brewler's Day Off, and Footloose. Yes, Footloose. Do you remember that? That was just... <gasps> that was amazing, wasn't it? Right, hold on. Hold on. What am I doing here, Teresa? Don't do that because you're about to go wrong. I'm getting so excited about some of these things that we're all remembering. Hold up. Oh, someone's mentioned something. Hold up, where are we? Chat's moving so fast. Buffy, yet. Yeah. I love, love, love. I love, love. See ya and Andy graphics shows. I don't think I've seen that one. If you want pretty Halloween, check out. Is that Gosmia Slipper by Bothy Thread? You love a high heel. Oh, I'll have to look that one up. I love weird science. It used to be one of my brother's favourites. Do you know what? I can actually repeat it word for word. How embarrassing is that? Overboard. Rewatch the must. Overboard. What one's that? Oh, I might have to. Oh, hang on. I need to write that down. Hold up. Let me write it down. Now that you're giving me these ideas. Where's where's my pen and paper? Who's in the overboard? Come on, tell me. Overboard. Um It wasn't the headless horseman. No, I don't well, well actually I don't know. Headless horseman? Hold up, I'm gonna have to Google. I'm gonna have to Google it. Let me get on my phone. Hold up. The Headless Horseman Custage. That is one of them. But it wasn't the one I was thinking about. But that is... So, for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, let me see if I can share it with you. There we go. That's... Oh, go away. So, that is one of them. But that's that's a bit of a gigantic one, isn't it? That's a Glendon place. But that wasn't the one that I was thinking of. See, I didn't realise I could do this. I could just show you my phone when I need to tell you something. <laughs> 
Have you seen The Good Witch with Catherine Bell? It was move, movies that turned into series. Is that the one that's on um, The Good Witch? Is that is that on Netflix? I think I've seen that on Netflix. I haven't watched it yet, though. Silver says, My mum loves a film and even lied about her age to sneak in and watch it at the cinema. And adored it. It was on a few months ago and she watched it again and decided she didn't like it. <gasps> See, now I'm going to have to confess that I'm a bit of a sucker for um, Twilight. I can't help it. Me and Lauren went and saw the trilogy at, at the pictures. And I'm going to be I'm going to be completely honest and throw this right out there. So the, for those of you that are diligent, you know, mummies, ignore what I just say. But I actually pulled her out of school for a whole day so that we could go and do the whole trilogy thing when the new one came out, the last one. So we, we went to the pictures we watched all of the other ones first, and then at three o'clock in the morning, the new one. We watched the new one, and yeah. Needless to say, I said that she was sick, just so that we could go, and I only did that because I needed her to come with me. <laughs> Is it Sleepy Hollow? Right, okay, let's, let's try this again. Hold up. That does ring a bell, Sleepy Hollow stitch sleepy hollow I don't think I've got the right no because sleepy hollow is the Glendon place one isn't it that's the one that we just looked at that's the headless horseman it's not sleepy hollow this one's like a Quaker oh she says stop wiggling it around it's like a Quaker. Um, Outlanders and the Tu and the Tudors are probably the most rewatched series. Outlanders, I do love, I do love a spot of Outlanders. I must say, I'm a bit of a sucker for an, for the Outlanders. But then talking of Outlanders, but I, because my mum loves the historical stuff, and it wasn't because it was racy. My mum, I remember before my mum had a stroke, she um. I told her about Outlanders, but you know when it's like, how do you sort of say to your mum, you'll love it because it's steeped with real history, and it actually, it's like, you know, the War of Culloden, and it's, it's, it, historically, it's all true and correct, but I'm like, you'll love that bit, but it's a bit racy, mum, and you know when you're just like, how do you, how do you say to your mum, you want to watch this, but you might need to cover your eyes, well, I was thinking, you know, she'll say yes, she she watched it or liked a bit a bit, and then be like, oh no, it got a bit too, got a bit too racy for me. Do you know what? My mum binge watched it to the point that she actually stayed up all night just watching series after series. I couldn't believe it. She got right into it, but I was just like, oh, oh, I didn't think you'd like it because of how racy it is. And she went, well, you know, there are racy bits in it. She said, but you know. She said, you know, I, I can cover my eyes if it gets too graphic. And I was like, oh, okay then. <laughs> but yeah, never have I sort of said to mum, you, you want to watch this and it's got, you know, it's got XXX rated stuff in it. And when I say XXX rated, I mean like for my mum. For my mum, that's XXX rated. Oh, whoops. Whoops. Hold up. This left hand drawing is, is, is a bit wiggly. Where are we at? There we are. Okay, so where are we at? Um, oh God, look, the chat's gone crazy again. Sleepy Hollows, no. Glendon Place, The Headless Horseman, no. Glendon Place, Headless Horseman. I love The Good Witch, such a great show. I'm gonna need to go and watch it now, aren't I? Is what you're telling me. <laughs> Overboard, Kurt Russell and Goldie Hawn. Oh! Oh, I need to go and watch that, don't I? I tried Grey's Anatomy and couldn't get on with it. I love Grey Silver. <laughs> Leela Studio. I don't think I've seen that one. Leela Studio? I might have to watch that one. Isabel, love, love, love Twilight. <laughs> my daughter binge watched Buffy. See, oh, my daughter binge watched Buffy together several times. She still recommends good shows or movies to me because we have similar tastes. I love it when it's like that. Right, so Rhonda says, I'm stitching Halloween Quaker. 
Oh, is it Le Leela's studio Halloween? Oh, sorry. Who is it that said that? Oh, Edia. Is it Ed? Edita? Ed. See, no, I'm terrible with these with these channel names. So when you were saying Leela's studio, I'm sitting there saying I haven't watched that. I thought you was looking at a movie, but you wasn't. You was giving me that chart. So I think I think you might be right. Hold up. Leela's studio. What is it called? Halloween. Halloween Quaker. <gasps> yes, that's the one. That is it. That is the one. Hold up. This one. I don't know if you can see that without any glare. I really like that. But it does look like it's enormous, doesn't it? I mean, I don't know how big it is. How big is it? But I do really like that one. That's about the only one that I've seen that I'm like, oh, I really would like that one. Oh, so Rhonda's actually stitching it. Rhonda, how big is it? Is it lovely? Are you enjoying it? Is there any bits on it that you don't like? Is it well charted? Because I think that's super cute. The Bridgertons, oh yes, anyone that hasn't seen The Bridgertons, I like that one. Although, I must admit, the first series was really racy and the second series was not very racy. It was more story-based. Um, Princess Bride, I love that story. Not a childhood show, but I love Downton Abbey. I like Downton Abbey, but I tend to like Downton Abbey, the, the films. Did your mum watch Poldark? No, but I did. <laughs> <laughs> I watch Poldark. Good for mum. Yeah. She loves a bit of racy stuff, really. No, she doesn't. <laughs> don't listen to mum, I'm sorry. <laughs> I know, you don't like the racy stuff. I know that. <laughs> it just comes as part of the package, I know. <laughs> My mum's probably sitting there going, what is she doing? She's making me sound like some, some racy floozy. Yep, you're all right. It is Leela Studio is Quaker, Hall Qu Quaker Halloween. I watch a lot of Brit shows as a kid and lots of shows like Simon and the Witch, Maid Marian and her Merry Men, Red Dwarf. Oh, Red Dwarf. Hello, hello. Only Falls on Horses. Oh, yeah. Love, love, love. I tell you what I did like. Um, The two ladies. Oh, what was it called? Um, absolutely fabulous. Love that as well. Did anyone watch Gilmore Girls with their daughters? Well, I watched Gilmore Girls, but not with my daughter. That's that's not her bag. Um, yeah, see Luna, Luna Bunny, and Miss Jensen love that chart. We just need to find out from Rhonda what it's like. It isn't too bad as it's a lot of blank space. Charlotte, have you stitched it? Won't be too big if you stitch it on a 28 count one over one or on 40 count linen. Rhonda says it's not that big. The Halloween Quaker was a super fun stitch, highly recommend. I have the Lula Studio Halloween in my stash. They also do a Christmas version as well. Oh, don't get me started. <laughs> oh. Charlotte says it's well charted and can be quick to stitch once you're on a roll. Yeah, I don't even think I get on a roll, do I? Look, look as soon as I start talking about something else, I'm like, abandon the stitching, we're talking. <laughs> oh, look, there's more of them stupid thingy pop-ups. Come on, mods. Where are you? Mod that stuff out. How do we get that out? I'm gonna have to have a web with Lauren and work out if. So, all right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this out there. So, because there's a lot of you that come onto my live streams that tend to always come to my live streams where you can, I would love to be able to mod some of you so that you can help me control this chat a little bit because the chat overwhelms me. I'm overwhelmed by the chat. So let me know if you're on it. If you come to my streams a lot, and then I can make you a mod. 
and then you can you can do the the stuff in in the chat to get rid of that because no one wants to sit there and find out about sex find dot pro really <laughs> no one wants to know go away <laughs> So Charlotte says, I've stitched half of it, but it's in time out. I realised I'm not good at counting. Charlotte, don't tell me that. You know what I'm like at counting. I'm absolutely atrocious. But I do really, really, really like it. Like, really like it. Right, I've just, I'm just hearing in the background that Lauren's just gone live on her stream. So the girls are now left to their own devices in the hallway so if they settle down we'll be fine if they don't settle down i might have to open the door and let them come and hang out with us or or just be a, a pain my mum said outlanders was a pornograph was <laughs> was too pornographic <laughs> this coming from a woman who had seven children <laughs> lynn you're just so funny <laughs> I'm pleased to say that my mummy's actually really quite, um, I mean, well, back in the day, I might say back in the day, make it sound like it was any different. Um, my mum would never have usually watched something like that. But over time and with age, and I think the fact that we, we weren't sort of, you know, I don't, well, I don't know. My mum just sort of got a little less prudish in mature years so but back in the day if we'd have sort of said anything like that for my mum to watch my mum would have been like that's disgraceful shouldn't even be on the telly <laughs> so so yeah how times change right okay where are we at 185 we need some more 185 um okay stream where are we so charlotte says she's happy to be a mod Thank you, Charlotte. Is there anyone else that would like to be a mod for when Charlotte's not around to sort this problem out? Um, my period dramas are more Jane Austen and Charles Dickens. A full clothes Mr. Darcy gets my pulse going. Oh, Silver. You've got to love a bit of Mr. Darcy out of... Um, Bridget Jones, isn't it? Is it, Brid it is Bridget Jones. <laughs> She says, hang on a minute. Bridget Jones, yes. Love, love, love. With her big mama pants. Gotta love that. Okay, so hold on. I'm gonna I'm gonna make those that wanna be mods mods. Okay, so Miss Jensen. As moderator. Um, Charlotte, where's Charlotte? Charlotte, you can be a monitor. Charlotte. Oh. Add monitor. There you go, ladies. Look after the chat for me. Don't let them disgusting things keep popping up. I mean, I'm sitting there, we're sitting here talking about Outlanders and pornographic and racy, and then I'm sitting there going, oh, who wants, <laughs> who wants these popping up? <laughs> oh, Emma Rose is happy to be a mod as well, so we'll make Emma, right, that's it. I think three's enough. What do we reckon? Add one. There we go. There we go, ladies. I'm reading the Bridgertons. Do you know, I didn't know they did a book of the Bridgertons. I didn't know that. <laughs> What's this? Oh, Colin Firth. Oh, yes. Now we're talking, ladies. <laughs> How did we end up on this conversation? Maybe you're attached maybe we're attracting them with the chat i do hope not right so Rhonda said halloween quaker is approximately 40 centimeters by 50 centimeters so 40 centimeters well that's not half a meter nearly but Rhonda, i think charlotte was saying that it's there's a lot of blank space 
So I think maybe it wouldn't be so bad because because you're not stitching. It's not like, I mean, this is the thing. I sit there and think full coverage. So when you're sort of sitting there thinking full coverage, you're basically talking about like a half a metre by a half a metre full coverage, which is totally different when it's not a full coverage. Stacy Matthew McCourtney is is so nice. Is it Math Matthew McCarthy? I don't even know how you say that. How do you say it? McCarthy? McCar McCarthy? Yeah, can't say that. But I know who you mean. <laughs> Hi Hannah, welcome to the stream. She's stitching on the drawn thread. Spent the evening learning the specialty stitches. Looks like I've done nothing in the last. 90 minutes <laughs> well at least i look like i've done something throughout the course of this stream which is yeah i feel like i'm totally productive now but i must admit i think you might have just enabled me to do this um lula studio talking of enabling karen the needle bug has a lot a lot to be yeah guilty of so you know that lovely um charting creations chart the uh the christmas fairy one that i got and i'm like i was going to start it and then i'd sort of sold it to myself that i was going to use my threads uh i got the uh, cxc thread so therefore not too cost you know not too costly the fabric i already had a whole ton of the 25 count um all the well, what are they called 25 count magic guide but in the 20 by 20 blocks which i i don't really like to use now um hold up one two three and i'd sort of decided that that was what i was going to do and that was i sold it to myself that that was what that was what it was going to be but then I started stitching on it. I've done 300 stitches on it. Doing two strands over one on the 25 count. Tent stitch, so half cross. I was still sitting there sorting the threads out and me and the lovely Karen went on to a, a chat yesterday evening. And we were sitting there chatting. And then she showed me one of her patterns because she doesn't normally like tent stitch. Hmm. She doesn't normally like tent stitch, but apparently she was watching me doing tent stitch and she thought she'd give it a go. And now she absolutely loved it. But get this, she's not doing tent stitch on a 25, 22, 28 count. Oh no, she's gone to a 32 count. And she's doing one strand tent stitch. And when she showed me how much progress she had on hers and then... You know, I had a close-up and personal experience with it where she was showing me. Needless to say, <laughs> I was like, oh, just think, only one strand. Because I do love working with one strand versus two. It's just that most of the things I can't, I can't, well, I've never been able to do it. But she's converted me. I say converted me. So I have already started it. So that was going to be one of my, oh, I've started this new project on my update. And now I'm like, although I started it on the 25 count and I sold it to myself that I could have a new start because I wasn't buying fabric and threads and yada yada. Um, yeah, needless to say, thanks to Karen the Needlebug, I succumbed and purchased 32 count Easy guide from Lakeside Needlecrafts. I didn't even think that they did it over here. That's that's how much I haven't even looked at this. But she's convinced me. So I've now got some more fabric winging its way to me. And I'm going to adjust it. And instead of it being stitched 2 over 1 tent stitch. I'm going to try the 1 over 1 tent stitch on 32 count. I mean when you see how much progress... Karen's got on hers in like a week I was just like <laughs> admittedly she does have more time to stitch than me but even so I do love working with one strand and there's not very many projects that I get to work on that only has one strand 
So, yeah. So there you go. Spoiler, people. You know what's coming your way. You so know now. Um... think you enabled yourself charlotte just said no it's you lot you all you all helping me sort of remind me of the yeah see like Rhonda saying oh it's such a and then charlotte saying oh well it's such an easy chart to stitch and it's, it's not that much of it and yeah it's you lot it's not me i just sort of looked at the chart and was like oh i think i would like to stitch that or stitch on that but would look would look would like to versus actually that's that's two different things right two different things altogether right now i've just got to the end of that bit would you believe that we've stitched that now i need to go back and just do this bit here i think right so emma's just turned around and said if you could go back in time, what era would you go back to? Oh, back, back. Big, big dresses. Massive dresses. Um, needlework has like your... Although, yeah, we say that. But I mean, I don't know if I'd like to go back that far without the tech. I mean, <laughs> can you imagine? But no, honestly, if I could go back, back, I think I would probably go... Where would I go? I think I would be like 1950s, like the 50s and the 60s, I think I would be. I loved, like, I loved all the stuff. I loved the fashion of the 50s and the 60s. Um, yeah. Where would you be? Which area, which era would you be born in? So Rhonda said, not full coverage and you can have mini finishes with each motif. Yeah, so you're selling it to me, Rhonda. You're enabling me. I don't need any more projects. Really, I don't. Why am I convincing myself I do? <laughs> My willpower's gone out the window. Right, the Bridgerton books come first. Oh, the Bridgerton books came first by Julie Quinn. Okay, I'll have to see if I can go and look for that. Natalie, I'm sitting here sorting my CXC threads for Christmas pairing. Yay, Natalie! <laughs> <laughs> that was me yesterday. I've still got I've got it over there. I'm still working on the threads. But it does give me time to carry on doing all of the threads before I um before I start it on a 32 count. So Natalie, what fabric count are you going to go with? And are you doing full cross or are you doing a half cross? What made you switch from DMC to CX? Price or quality? Um with the birds in all fairness, curiosity. I know it killed the cat. I know that. But curiosity is what made it so that I was like, you know, I'm intrigued. So many people sort of use it. Hold up. 3608. 3608. 3608. Where's 3608? So lots and lots of people had mentioned it and were saying about it and me being me I had a bit of a fear of missing out <laughs> but also I'll be honest it was a cost price the cost price is massive so you think you can buy a skein of DMC here in the UK current value and I know this because I checked yesterday is 79p 79 pence a skein from Lakeside Needlecrafts Okay. But then obviously you've got to pay four or five pound for the for the delivery. But when you're kitting up and you're sort of you need 90 skeins at 79p, it's massive. It's like your project what what when you're sitting there going, it's only 79p a skein, all of a sudden your 79p a skein just got it just got expensive. And that's without the chart and without the fabric. Um the CXC threads, she says. Let me consult people. Hold on, I'm consulting. So my CXC threads. Hold up, I need to switch switch accounts. Oh no, it's raining. Welcome to welcome welcome to England, people. I think the CXC threads were. Can't 
come on where is it so the CXC threads the CXC threads are 25p a skein so it's a big difference I do have some of the rows to me so that's the ones that are the equivalent of the new the new low numbers that were issued by DMC the CXC threads don't come in those but the rows to me threads they're 30p so that's 30 pence a skein for the rows to me which is the new ones and then you've got the CXC threads which are 25p that can't be sniffed at when you're looking at kitting up something where you need I don't know 60 60 or 90 skeins of something uh, you can get DMC for 75 from KLT charting didn't know that thank you for letting me know anyone that still loves their DMC's which I do I still use DMC's for a lot of my projects to be honest that the CXC threads are more for my full coverage in all fairness and I've not done a straight comparison um, of the colour difference between CXC and DMC. But because I'm going to be stitching all CXC on the same project, it's not like I'm mixing my DMCs with my with my CXC threads. I don't see that being a problem at all. So for me, that's that's not a, that's not a deal breaker. Um. The only thing that I would say about the CXC threads, they are, and I find them, oh, why is that going out of focus? That's it. Um, I do find them a little bit, I find that they're a little bit more fuzzy. I say fuzzy, it's not fuzzy, it's not the right word. Why is that going out of focus? I think it's because it's not focusing on the right bit now. Um, so... I just tend to find that I like the coverage a little more on the on the CXC threads. However, the bit that I don't like about the CXC threads is that when you try and thread a needle, I find that they're that I struggle to, to to sort of do the needle bit because they they're so fuzzy that I can't get them through the eye of the needle. Um, that just could be me and my really shoddy technique. Um, but that's just that's just me personally. Um, so I have to use a needle threader to, to to use the CXC threads. I'm hoping that once once I'm doing it so that it's um, a single strand using CXC threads, it, it'll go through the needle without a problem. It's just that I'm always usually doing two strands, and I always get one strand through, and the other strand all sort of goes a bit frayed at the edge. So yeah, some pe I think I think it's a it's a love hate thing. You either love it or you hate it, or you a bit like me where it's like, well, I'm prepared to sacrifice, you know, having to use a needle threader if it's going to cost me half the price to kit the project up, especially with the amount of projects that that I've got along with everybody else. Um. So Natalie's going 28 count, 10 stitch, two strands. Yeah, good shout, my love. You don't fancy trying it on the 32 count and doing one strand? <laughs> Come and join the crazy club. Um, you get DMC for... Yeah, I've done that one. Um, I cannot see myself using anything but DMC. Silver... I think it's, it's it's not a, yeah, I think some people are like, you know, take it or leave it and other people are like, no, I like what I like. And if you know what you like and you like what you like, then it makes total sense to stay liking what you like. Right, I think because I've scheduled my camera to only really work up here, I don't think it's going to let me go down here because every time I did that bit down there, it went out of focus, didn't it? So we may have to... Um, Go back up to the top. Oh, but then I'm going to have to use... Then I'm going to have to start counting. What's the time? What's the time? We have been on stream for nearly nearly an hour and 45 minutes. Should I do more stitching? Or should, should I just sit and talk to you? What, what would you prefer? If I just sit and talk to you, I could sit and do some of my... 
skeins. Or I can sit and do more stitching. I found a needle threader like yours on Stony Creek homepage, but the ship the shipping the shipping were too too pricey to Denmark. Oh, I've been looking for another one. Well I'm looking for the, the bit that goes in the top. The replacement. CXC threads are cotton and polyester versus all cotton DMC. I notice it has a static electricity in it when I was cutting my lengths. Do skeins less likely to make a mistake? <laughs> Talk is a nice break. Do whatever you would like. Well, as long as you don't mind actually sitting here not looking at the stitching or not me not stitching, I can sit here and do the floss. Stay and either talk or stitch, whatever you want. Organising floss is good. Right, okay, as long as everyone's happy for me to sit here and organise floss. Right, let me switch over the screen then. There we go. Let's stitch over, switch that over so you can have, you can have me up close and personal. Now, why is my stream, right, is the stream, the, the chat isn't showing on that box, is it? Oh, yes, it is. It's, it's coming on now. There we go. Right, let me move this out of the way. And we'll close this down. I tell you what, give me, I'm going to turn the music up a little bit and just go on and be right back. Just give me a couple of minutes to sort myself out. All right, so I'll go and grab a beverage of choice, a cup of tea or a coffee. In fact, that's a really good idea. I could do with a cup of tea. I could have a cup of tea and a chat with you all, couldn't we? We could have a cup of tea together. Um, yeah, okay. Give me, because I could do with a wee as well. <laughs> Not that you needed to know that, but I'm sharing it sharing i'm feeling your love people this evening um give me two or three minutes to quickly go and whiz a cup of coffee up and to have a wee um you all do the same or do whatever you're doing and and i'll be right back how's that sound does that sound like a good idea i need to change laundry again so that works wonderful tea and chat okay give me a couple of minutes and i'll be right back okay
Hello. Okay, we're back. We're back. Right, is the music down low enough for you all? Have you all got something to drink or something to eat? And for those that have left, I'm sorry. But I know that they had things to do. <sighs> Denise... Den is it Denisa? Denisa said, you just made me think of a Benny Hill joke where he stood up and shouted, We! <laughs> Hi everyone, it's been about nine months since I've seen any floss tube or watched live. I'm missing this community so much. Oh, well welcome to the live stream and it is a fabulous community, isn't it? Right, it looks like the girls, the girls are happy behind me. So can you see them? There they are. So hopefully they're going to behave themselves for us and let us have a little chat and, and sort out the threads at the same time. That's the plan. Hello from Calgary, Canada. Wish me luck. I'm trying to finish my first hay this afternoon. Only 553 stitches left on watching the world go by. <gasps> Congratulations, round of applause. Give us some claps in the chat, people. I know you've got 553 left to go, but you're so there, you can do it, you can do it. Oh, I would love to be that close to a finish on one of mine. Mine are like way, way, way off, way off. Okay, Emma says, I'm in my kitchen doing a cup of tea. Oh, great, fabulous. I've got my tea, I've got my cup of tea, my Lady Grey. Sherry says, this is perfect. Got a bit of stitching done with you and finished a section. Now time for snacks and, and chat with you. Yes. Look at all the claps in the chat. Look at all them claps in the chat. Yay, come on, get that finish. Just cooking up my porridge for breakfast whilst I watch. And what time of day is it for you then if you're getting breakfast? What neck of the woods do you reside in, sweetie? I need to try a Lady Grey. Do you know what? It, it's just got a... You know, like, um, some teas have just, like... Well, I don't know. They just sort of taste like tea, right? I'm, I'm, right, I'm going to start with the threads, because otherwise I won't start the threads. Um, but Lady Grey has got, like, a... It's not a fruity taste... I can't really describe it. It's a fresher cup of tea, if you know what I mean. Cup of tea and found a bar of galaxy chocolate in the fridge. Bonus. Philippa? Really? Oh, why would you mention chocolate? You do realise I'm going to have to go and get in the car now. And go out and get some chocolate. Once this stream's finished. Because I've just got this undying urge for chocolate. <laughs> Elizabeth says, hi everyone, first time writing in the live after lurking in the background. Just ordered my first Bella Filipina, Temptress of the Cursed Sea, after being enabled by someone. I wonder who that someone is. Who's that someone? Huh? Who is it? <laughs> I have no idea who she's referring to. Does anyone know? <laughs> but welcome to the stream. I hope you have fun. This is a place to make friends and to, yeah, to, to watch Teresa make a... a fool of herself most days but yeah I hope you enjoy your time with us what was this so Anne's in Hobart it's 6.50am wow I take it it's Monday morning so Erin says 72 beads left and I'll have a finish too do you know what all these people have got finishes you're making me really jealous now <laughs> although I can't complain I have, welcome is is nearly there. I've got a little bit of, I don't know, I think I've got a little bit of backstitch to do and then beading and then it's done. So I just need to get on with some beading. I might have to try and see if I can get up early in the morning and do some of that, if the girls let me. They've just run off out the room again. So yeah, this this could be fun because they'll be up to no good out there. So yeah, Erin. 
Get those beads going. Get them beads in. 72 beads left. That's like momentous, isn't it? What, what project's that on? You'll have to tell us what project that is. Joe, a hade is a heaven and earth design. Thank you for sharing what that is. We love our acronyms, don't we? But we always make the assumption that everybody knows what they are. But anyone that's new or doesn't do full coverage... Oh, baby, did you fall? Um, everyone that's new or doesn't do full coverage doesn't really know what the full coverage, what hade is. We all know what it is, right? And for those that don't know, we will be the first ones to tell you what it is. Silver says, I have a Bella Filipina Luna Mystica. I've, I think, I've, I can't remember which ones I've got now. I've got Miyari. I've got the um, the mermaid one, which I can't say. In fact, <laughs> maybe, maybe we should try the, can someone actually spell, spell it the way you're supposed to say it for me? Because I can never say it. I never know how to say it. So I need it to be spelt the way that I would say it. And we'll see if I can get it right. We need a bell to ring for those finishes. Oh, we do. I mean, I don't know whether there isn't any. See, this isn't like um, this isn't like Twitch where you can have like your own special emojis, like the little things. I think the little cups. So Miss Jensen's done like the the winner winner cups. Maybe we should use those instead of a little bell. Woohoo, girls are at school, bring on the stitching. North Island stitcher, get on with that stitching. Whilst you're stitching, I'm 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 on thread duty because if I don't get these threads at the ready, the the stitching of the new chart won't start. Although, you see, you've got me you've got me on it. I want to go and buy that other one now. But then I need to decide, do I want to do it on a 40 count? Because I quite like that 40 count Newcastle in light colours. I don't know whether I'd like to stitch on it in a dark colour because I don't know whether it's... But then it's... Oh, I don't know. I don't know, people. The, di the dilemma of being me and hey, do I really need another new start? Did anyone get anything in the recent hate sale? No. I've avoided, I've avoided it like the plague. Where are we? Hold up. Three, seven, seven, four. Come on, girls, you can do it. That's right, Emma. Give them the inspiration. We've got one that's only got 72 beads to go. And then we've got another one that's only got 554 stitches, was it? See, look. Such a menopausal brain. It can't even remember what it said a minute ago. And you're there. You're done. Oh. There's nothing quite like that finish buzz, is there? Not that I know much about it. I don't get it very often. But how many of you get to the end of a project and it's like that, it's the bittersweet. See, I've made a right mess of this now. You know where it's like, you've been waiting for something to finish for so long, but then when it finishes, you feel like you're going to miss it or that you cheated or it's like, oh, well, what do I do now? Do you know what I mean? That feeling. You must know what I mean. I've made a right mess of this thread. <laughs> This is where Teresa shows you how not to mess with your threads and how not to get knots. <laughs> of which I'm going to, yeah, I'm seeing where this is going already. This is a good start. Oh no, I got chocolate on my new... You didn't, Charlotte. You're not eating chocolate as well. Why is everyone eating chocolate? What is going on, people? Why have I not got any chocolate? I want chocolate. I mean, I could be really lazy and order like a delivery of chocolate from the grocery store, but that, I think that's a bit much. Even I can't justify that, I don't think. My mum's got chocolate. I know that my mum won't be up. I can't go and wake my mum up just so I can go and raid her cupboard, can I? 
What's this? So Sherry says, I was very naughty and I got five new charts from the Haid cell. Not like I don't have more than I'll ever finish. We all do the same. Don't think that you're the only one. I've got more project... Well, I've got more, more charts than I know what to do with. But, yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. What was that? My stitching obsession... Oh, oh, no. Not stitching obsession. So, my chocolate obsession is why I'm totally doing chocolate, chocolate, chocolate and more chocolate. Next, alongside one I'll be doing for my mum. What a great one to have. <laughs> Nothing like a spot of chocolate. Oh, I'm making a pig's ear of this. Look. Look at what I've done to this, this skein of thread. See, this is the only thing with the CXC threads. I need to have a word with... Is it Amber? Or Abby? Abby. Abby from Cross and Crafts, where I get my CXC threads. So, with the DMCs, when you look at the labels on your DMCs, they're actually, believe it or not, if as long as you take the skein... As long as you take the the end from the bottom of the skein it will unravel perfectly these ones don't seem to have any rhyme or reason or at least i don't think they do so i think i need to have a word with abby and see whether i'm right or wrong in what i just said because i end up sort of like this with some of these yeah see because i've definitely gone from the wrong end here and i've just made a whole hot mess of it <laughs> It's a good job I'm not trying to eat chocolate. This is cream thread. Of which I'm making a right mess with. And it's a good job I don't have a cat because it's all going all over the floor now. Hi, trees are in the gang. I've had... I had to drop, but I'm back. Question about improving on backstitch and taking my projects... From mediocre to fabulous. Hints or tutorials. Oh, does anyone know where they do a backstitch tutorial? I mean, I know that there's a lot of people whenever I've sort of... Because I'm not a lover of backstitch, as you know. Um, and a lot of people have said that you can actually, instead of, instead of doing backstitch, you can catch... You can catch the backstitch to make it sit nicer. But, I don't know, that just seems like a bit more of a faff to me. Seems as I hate backstitching at the best of times. Um, I think it depends on what you're backstitching. I don't really have any tips for you. Other than... Well, no, I don't have any tips for you. <laughs> Does anyone have any tips in the chat for her? about backstitch because I'm probably not the best person to ask because I have a I have my own pet hate for backstitch and unwinding thread it appears because I'm making a complete pig's ear of this see this is how professional I am look how professional I am with my, with my skates this is CXC thread though this isn't DMC so I do need to check whether the, there's a like there's a way round that you're supposed to Unravel the, th the thread. Um, I'm in love with Hade. My hubby was so happy. Cross stitching is a cheap hobby. Then I mentioned the heaven and earth. And now I'm grounded for buying more. Until I complete at least one project. <laughs> See that's why I don't ever tell hubby. What I've bought. How much something cost. Everything that he says how much does it cost. It's always like 15 quid less than it actually was. But I don't have to rely on him knowing because he can't really see what I've spent because I have my own separate bank account. <laughs> and it's staying that way. But to be honest, he would have no right in quibbling at me. I mean, he spends a lot of money on his toy cars. A lot of money. Because it's not a cheap... So again, it's just not a cheap hobby. Stitching is actually relatively cheap for the amount of time that it takes us to do what we do. It's just that we're, we've all got more than one project. That's that's the only thing that makes it a bit more expensive is because we're not stitching... We're not monogamous stitchers where we're only stitching one thing at a time. Right, come on. There, where's the other end? It's got to be here somewhere. Oh, there we go. Oh. Really? 
there's me sitting there going, oh yeah, I'll have more time to be able to sit and chat and watch, you know, watch the chat. And I'm sitting here sort of like making the complete faff of this. But hey. We're going with it. Right, hold on. The chat's gone crazy and I'm not following it. Where is it? Okay. One, oh right, okay, what's this? We are curators. We are curators of the charts. We won't have the time to stitch. One end pulls smooth. The other end tangles. I always get the wrong end. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm obviously finding the same thing with these CXC threads. The DMC I'm fine with because I know which way round it's supposed to be. So I've always done it that way. But these, these, these are like a new beastie to me. So it's a, it's a learning process of how to do it without making them even more tangled. Okay, I think I did it. I did. I did. We've done it. Okay, right. Let me put the chat down so that it just rolls because I keep pausing it, believe it or not. Uh, I think Needlebug did a tutorial on her channel for Backstitch. Brandy, did she? Oh, we might need to we might need to link to that. Keep it short, don't pull it tight on backstitch. Keep it keep it short. So what? Keep the length short and don't pull it tight. So that it doesn't sort of like tug on the stitches. Charlotte says cross stitch was cheap until my friend who stitched Stitching too, then they started enabling you and enabled bad influences. Charlotte, you're a bad influence, along with a lot of people that are on this chat. I mean, I, I can name you. I could name and shame you. And the fact that you've all sort of sat there giving me the idea that I should also do that, that Halloween one. The Halloween Quaker. The Leela Stitch. Is it Leela? Leela Studio. That's it. Leela Studio. I must remember that one. Leela Studio, yeah. I'm seeing what's happening here. I'm grounded too. I don't work outside the house, so it gets tricky. Yep, yeah, there is the issue when they have a bit more control over the money. Yeah, I'm I'm lucky in that respect. But then I'm unlucky because I, you know, I I love all the projects and I love to have all the starts, but. In all fairness, I don't really have that much time to do as much stitching as I would like because I'm out of the house working all the time. And even when I'm not out of the house. I mean, like, back in the day, I remember when working, you know, you could work from home and they were, like, not down days, but they were days where, you know, you could take a moment or if I was on a call or whatever, I could do some stitching. Those days, those days seem to be gone at the moment. It's like I'm so busy all the time. So, so busy. Right, let's see if we can do this the right way this time. Okay, I'm gonna go from there, because that looks like it's on the outside. That's it, that feels better. I didn't pay any attention to which way around that label was then. I have a tatty Ted and snow, snowman waiting in the wings to finish the back stitch. Oh, you mean to tell me you've got finished and all it needs is a bit of back stitch, and then you're done, God. Get on with that backstitch. Mine knows but doesn't ask. He has his model trains. I have stitching. Yeah, see, any any woman that has got a man that has got his own hobbies, the men don't really get to sort of dictate too much about how much money we spend because they go and spend money. But if you've got someone that doesn't have a hobby, then it, yeah, it gets a bit more tricky. Needlebug, I'll find you. Oh, what was that? Needlebug, I'll find you. All who finished these ladies so beautiful, I just know would have suggested on improving the details. Unfortunately, my brother is in charge of my finances, otherwise I would end up in financial tangle and that can't and that you can't fudge. So I need to, I need him to keep you informed and know exactly how much I spend. That's fine if, if yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, there, there are some people that they need, they need to be restricted. In all fairness, I probably should be restricted. 
if I, if I was a bit more restricted, I probably wouldn't just keep going and buying more things and having more projects than I need. And in all fairness, I'm not that bad. I don't think so you know like when I watch a lot of the floss tube videos and when I lo watch a lot of the floss tube videos a lot of people always have lots and lots of haul I don't really have a lot of haul and I only ever usually buy something that unless it's really cheap or it's you know it's, it's I don't I don't buy a lot that goes waiting on the wings or waiting in the wings I, a lot of the stuff that I buy I will start so that I know I've started it if you can hear some funny noises, that's Honey. She's She's got a little rope toy of which she's totally destroying down here on her bed next to me. She loves to chew. She loves to chew. But yeah, no, I, I must admit, I don't, I don't do a lot of whole haul. But if I really like something, I will buy it. As you know. See, that one doesn't look quite right, does it? Where do you buy your CXC floss in the US? I don't know. Does anyone know where the CX, whether you can get the CXC threads in the States? I think me and Karen, the needle bug, had this conversation yesterday. Because I think she was saying that they don't really, I don't think it's particularly easy to come by in the States. Whereas for us, I think you have to buy directly from China. Whereas we've got quite a few suppliers here in the UK. So I get mine from Cross and Craft. I mean, I'm sure she could ship abroad, um, but obviously you would have the extra cost of the shipping. Then you have to question, would it actually be cheaper for you to have the DMC threads? Bearing in mind that the DMC threads are much cheaper in the States per skein than they are here in the UK. Oh no, I think I might have just done the same thing again now. Have I just done the same thing again? Come on. Do you like my concentrating face? <laughs> I'm concentrating now. Where'd he go? Yeah, I don't think this is the right side. No, where's the other end? Start at the other end, Teresa, because it's not going well over here. Okay, hold on. Where is it? There. Right, let's try it this way around, shall we? Oh, that's better. Right, sorry, I hope you was all chatting then. Um, if it is the same CXC thread I have, you should be able to pull it from the middle. If you move the label to each side, there should be an end hiding. Yeah, but the problem is the two ends are in the middle at the same place. So, whereas on the DMC, as long as the writing is up the right way, I know the end that I want is the end that's tucked into the middle. On the ones that I'm getting, the end is on is in the middle on both both the top and the bottom. If that makes sense. What my husband earned is mine, and what I earn is also mine. I learnt from my mum. Totally right. What's the old saying? What's what's yours is mine, and what's mine is mine. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, we've got to a bit where it's not right, it appears. Come on. Yeah, I'm definitely making a pig's ear of this. But hey, we'll carry on. Joanne says... Uh, Joanne... Jo Joanne, Joanne. Hi Teresa, I'm in bed with my dog Lucy. Lovely. Johnny from Sydney, Australia. I finally get to catch a stream. Love your work and hear for your stories. Oh, welcome to the stream. What time is it there? Is it morning? It must be morning time or is it night time? Oh dear. I just want to put it out there. I'm I'm slow at texting and I'm dyslexic, so have a bit of help. Oh, so have a bit of help. 
so I'm talking to you, you know. Emma, that's not a problem. Not a problem at all. And you don't need to put it out of there. We don't mind. Trust me. With the things that I say and when I sort of look back and I see how it was written and I'm like, uh, that, was not what, that was not what was written and I still managed to say something completely and utterly different. No apologies needed here on this channel. Charlotte, your haul is never that much unless you spend a weekend with us lot. You're totally right there. See, this is the problem with going to Stitch and Retreats. I say they're a problem because then they're, they're, they're not a problem, but you just need to have budgeted for it. So if you're one of these people that sort of goes to a Stitch and Retreat and then thinks, oh, I must, you know, I must be, I must be good, then it won't work. It never does. But if you go knowing that you've sort of put, you know, you've put a little budget, a little stash of pocket change and the, and the rest to one side so that when you go and you get totally enabled, you can just have a little bit of a spend up. But she's true. I mean, I, I mean, I might buy charts and, and stuff, but I think the costly thing normally is the threads. No matter how much you try and sort of like keep the cost down, it's the threads, especially with some of the smaller charts, because the smaller charts as well, um, a lot of them call for like specialty threads. And as soon as you start going outside of DMC and outside of CXC and you start rolling into specialty threads, it becomes a little bit more expensive. So it's, I think it is sort of more about if you're happy to go with the DMCs, you can you can you can do a lot of projects that are really quite reasonably priced. I think you have to be careful when you say reasonably priced because obviously everyone's got a different budget. Um, but yeah, hence the reason why I think the CXC threads are great for people that are on a tight budget. If you're on a tight budget and you want to do full coverage, but then when you've looked at it, you can't afford to spend. I don't know, 50 or 60 quid on just threads for a full coverage. And that's without that's without the chart, which is another like 20 something dollars. And then on top of that, you've then got to buy the fabric. So yeah, by the time you sort of start looking at it from that perspective, the CXC threads become the game changer. I think. But then the smaller projects that require something else, I mean, you have got lots of kits out there. But again, so like the Bella Filipinas and the Mirabilia kits, I mean, when you actually look at them when they're kitted up properly, they're, they're not cheap. Some of them are really, really expensive. Oh, the, the chat's been going and I haven't had it down there. Hold up. What is going on with these Tinder hot things? Ooh, they're very annoying, aren't they? But don't worry, I've got the mods. We've got the mods in the chat that are helping. Teresa, I'm in the same Teresa with my floss as well. <laughs> Emma, you make me feel better. At least it's not just me. So it's 7.15am in Sydney. Got my brekkie and watching. Soon we'll have a quick little stitch to get my mind sorted before being bombarded for a long work day. Oh, I'm feeling your pain. That'll be me tomorrow morning. Just think of me tomorrow morning. I've got so much work to do and so much to catch up on. There's just never enough hours in a work day. And whereas I used to actually get like a full hour for lunch, even when I was working from home, even when I'm working from home now, it's just not happening because I have to use that time to sort of do all the things because yeah, there's just too much happening. Too much happening on the work front, but hey, I'd rather be in work than uh, than not working. Because it pays my bills, and if I have to work, yeah, I think you have to be careful what you wish for, don't you? So I have to be, you know, sometimes I sit there and go, oh, you know, I hate working, and I, I want to be a kept woman, but although I say all that, if someone turned around and said to me, well, you could be a kept woman, but then you would have to justify, you know, your spending to your husband and, and then you would have to be careful what you buy and you, did, you wouldn't be able to have holidays and you wouldn't, you know, if, if there was lots of, if there was lots of restrictions to it, I think I'd go off the idea very, very quickly. Oh no, now I've, uh, okay, we've got ourselves in another hot mess. 
<laughs> oh dear. This do it now you now you see why it takes me so long to sort out these threads. Because I'm obviously doing something wrong. Obviously, she says. Okay. No, I'm definitely doing something wrong here. Okay, put that down. I have boxes of different threads and when I go to get some ticket up, never have the right thread. It's always the way, don't you find? You can have as many threads as you like and you can think that you're like the guru of all threads. You've got everything. Until you actually go to kit a project up and find that there might just be one thread that you don't have. And it will always guarantee be the thread that you don't have. Chatelaine can get expensive to kit up, especially now that the Swarovski is not making crystal beads anymore. Is it not? I didn't know that. Oh, that's going to get really, really costly then. Unless they can find a substitute. That's what I like about European cross stitch. Um, they, they sort of, if, if something's a discontinued thing, they normally have some sort of substitute that they put in its place. That's my finding anyway. Oh dear. Look at the state of this. <laughs> <laughs> oh my I'm making a complete pig's ear with this people just in case you didn't know that already oh I'll stick that back there I have a Chatelaine chart it was definitely very expensive to kit up what I did was space out the purchasing for it over the span of the year that's a good shout if you can find, I mean, the problem I found with Evening in the Park especially is that some of the threads are so hard to come by and they've already discontinued that if you if you see them, you just have to pounce on them and buy them now because I know that there's sort of a lot of them that are a discontinued thread. And like I say, yes, if you buy it as a kit, it gets substituted. But if, if you're kitting it up yourself and you have no idea what sort of thread it is, you wouldn't really know what you're going to substitute it with. It becomes a little bit more tricky, I think. But I think the newer Chatelaines are not a problem. Oh dear, I've got a knot now. And not working makes it what's this anyone know why my chat says my comments are on slow mode um that's me so basically the slow mode is so that so that people can't just keep repeating like line after line because i can't keep up with the chat i put it on something called slow mode which basically means that it slows everyone down with their chatting so that i can keep up <laughs> It's my benefit. It's for my benefit if that helps. But don't worry, it's nothing to do with what you're doing. It's more the fact that I can't keep up with the chat. It's not you. It's not. It's Teresa, and she controls the speed of chat. What kind of work do you do? What me, Je um, Judith? I'm an executive assistant, so basically I'm a glorified skivvy. <laughs> so everything and anything that my boss wants or needs is my job to make it happen. And we actually have a saying now, because he's like, can you make some magic happen, please? And it is. Nine times out of ten, it's normally something where I have to pull a favour, or it's not what you know, it's who you know, or, yeah. It's a whole, it's a whole lot of stuff, but it's so varied as to what what I have to do in a day. But I think that's the thing. I'm a creature of planning and organizing. So I love everything planned, everything organized. So I hate it when my weekends don't go according to plan because it messes with my messes with me in my happy place. Um, 
which probably makes my job probably the most um the most unsuitable job for someone like me because my job is like reactive it's one of their job one of those jobs where it doesn't matter how how something went wrong well of course Try it again did in a few seconds just google to interrupt my job's a reactive job so it's one of those jobs that all the time everything's going as it should go it's fine and I can sit there and have a plan of what I'm going to do for the day and what needs to be done next. But if all of a sudden something comes up, it's like I have to drop everything and go and change everything and sort something, which, yeah, it messes with my head. It's, it's not a well-suited job for me and my, my natural personality, let's put it like that. And I know that because I'd done something called the Myers-Briggs, so we had to do... Part of our learning to work with each other and our working styles was we done a Myers-Briggs, which is a questionnaire thing. And it works out whether you're an introvert, an extrovert. And Chris, because I appear to be very outgoing and I appear to be very sociable and I'm always chatting and I'm always... Everyone basically makes the assumption that I'm an extrovert. But I'm actually not. I'm an introvert. Believe it or not. So, although... but. They basically say that they take into consideration that if you've been doing a job for a long time, basically you fake it. So, because my job, I've been I've, I've been doing this job for so long, it's almost like I have to put my game face on to go to work and just rise above. And you can teach yourself to do that. But if you're looking for sort of what is your natural personality, my natural personality is that I'm actually an introvert. Which is why I'm actually really good in small groups. But as soon as it gets to things like the Christmas party or, you know, bigger groups, I'm like, oh, really? Stitching is not too bad because I've, there's always someone that's like-minded. So I can, I can find, like, a, select, a selection of people that I can talk to in smaller groups. And even... Even when I go to a retreat, if it's a, if it's a huge retreat, I've only ever been to one really big retreat, and believe it or not, that was my first one. And even for me, I I, I got overwhelmed, because I was just like, wow. I think there was, I can't remember how many people were at that. Gina knows, Gina, Gina I think was involved with the running of that retreat. Gina, can you remember, if you're still on the chat, can you remember how many people were at the first Hade retreat that we went to? I just know it was big. There was just a lot of people there. And it was, it was even for me, I was like, oof. I feel a bit scared now. But it just goes to show you that even though the interpretation, most people that like watch me on here and they're like, oh, you know, she's an extrovert, she's outgoing. I'm not. And the Myers-Briggs proves that, that I'm not. T, I know it is tempting to not take breaks, but you will... You will work better if you do. Recommend you take your hour and get outside. When you come back, you will be two times more effective. You're probably right. But nine times out of ten, it will be like, my boss will allocate for lunch at, say, 12. But then I'll end up on a conference call at 12. So then I think, okay, well, I'll go on. I'll, I'll have my lunch at one. But then my boss will be back by one. And then he'll start pinging me. And I can't just sort of say, no, sorry. <laughs> no, sorry, I'm, 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 I'm not working for you for a whole hour. Because he, he doesn't totally well. It's just not a done thing. If he pings me, he expects an answer. Especially when I'm working from home. So Natalie is an ISTJ. So that's introvert... Natalie, you're going to have to spell it out for me because I've forgotten. I can't remember what mine is. I need to go and look it up. It's on my, it's on my office laptop. Teresa, so you're a firefighter putting out fires. Yes. That's exactly what I do. I, I, and I make magic happen. I make everything happen in the background and everyone just makes the assumption that everything's gone smoothly. Christy says, my 85 pound lab and his 40 pound sidekick are hysterically letting me know it's time for me to exercise i really enjoyed the chat with you all see you next time signing off from alaska thank you for joining and take care go and go and see to your fur baby sweetie um i'm introverted sometimes and extroverted others so i'm always say i'm i'm an ambient 
Definitely need to be quiet time though. Yeah, I do. I need quiet time. I've done the Myers-Briggs, learnt a lot about myself. Do you know what? It's really, it's really interesting. Oh, Silver, you've done it as well. I didn't realise so many people had done the Myers-Briggs. I'm, I'm impressed, people. Stacey says, when I'm an EA, my day would be planning and then five minutes after sitting down with it all messed up. We did the Briggs. I have no comment <laughs> because... I definitely don't agree. <laughs> Deborah says, I'm also an introvert. Ambivert, I guess. Automatic correction, don't like that one. <laughs> Teresa, are you getting more knots in your floss? Um, I've stopped, haven't I? Okay. I am still getting the knots in the floss. There must be a way that you do this that I just haven't figured out yet. So am I supposed to be get, see see look this is my this is my dilemma people so on the DMC when you go to the middle of the skein and you face it so that it's that way down oh I haven't got the camera so I can't show you when it's this way down so you've got the label at the bottom you would normally have a thread somewhere at the bottom here and that's the one that you pull and it will automatically unravel with the CXC threads however this is my two Oh, it's a bit harder in this camera, people. This is my two threads. And they're at the top. But they're right next to each other. So I can never work out what one's what. To know that I'm undoing the skein the correct way. There must be a way to know how to do this. I just haven't figured it out. Do you know what? Let's have a, let's have a sip of tea, shall we? I need advice and think, what would Teresa do? <laughs> I'm not probably the best person to do that with. I'm a people person, at least I was when I took it. So Gina said, over 40, I think. Yeah, there was more than 40 people, Gina. I think it was, I think it was more like 60. I was made, oh, I was mad with my Myers-Briggs results. But it made me think about it and teach me more about myself. Introvert as well, but have to be dominant at work. So yeah, I'm the opposite. I'm the opposite at work. I'm a, he says jump, I say how high. But then that's my job. My job's always been that. Hair pull, I couldn't figure out why I stitched 10 cross stitches wrong. Apparently I bumped pattern keeper and the screen moved over. I find out after I frog all the stitches. Oh, Catherine, that sucks so bad. Are you so? Did you frog your stitches? Sounds like the devil wears Prada kind of job. Do you know what? You're not wrong. You're not wrong. And I do love the film The Devil Wears Prada. It's a brilliant movie. I need to go. My daughter is here for dinner. Miss you all already and we'll see you all another day. Have a blast and happy stitching. Bye, Stacey. Thank you for joining the stream. Have a lovely week ahead of you. Gina, I need to go and look at the spreadsheet. Maybe 50. Uh, yeah, I think, I think there was quite a few there. Gina was an extrovert, but my deafness... Yeah, see, that's, that's the problem. I think if you've got any under... What I call underlining health issues i think that can that can affect whether you naturally were extrovert and then become introvert because i think if you feel like you're not part of the group or you're not part of the it gets very difficult to sort of feel inclusive and in included which then makes it so that your natural your natural status 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 no your natural the way that we feel that confidence level changes i think Right, let's see whether I've got the right end this time. Please be the right end this time. I don't think it is. That looks like it's... Okay, we're going to go this. We're going to go the other way. Um, was involved with our woman minister group and we took the Briggs to find out how we all work together. Yeah, that's exactly what I was using it for. I'm an introvert with a hippie soul. <laughs> Jeep girl, love it. 
<laughs> I'm the same way. I used to fake it in order to do my administrative role. I'm glad now that I'm in, a, in our farm's office doing payroll and paperwork. I rarely have to deal with large groups and I like small groups. Yeah. You know when you sort of sit there thinking I'm sort of in the wrong job, but I think I've been doing it so long now that I don't really see how I can have a career change. I think I'm sort of... I mean, I think what doesn't help is I've got to that age where I'm like, you know, I'm like, I don't want to go and learn new tricks. I'm sort of done with that. And any other job that I need to go, you know, where you need to go and learn another job basically means that I need to learn all new stuff. And I don't think, I don't think I want to do that. I'm going, you know, you know that drive and ambition, my drive and ambition sort of, I'm not at that point now. I used to have drive and ambition of what I wanted to be and what I wanted to do, but now, now I'm more like not ticking the years away. I want to enjoy what I do. I would love to, to enjoy what I do on a daily basis, but not to the point that I'm going to go and learn new things and, and just sort of, yeah, have all that ambition and drive and I'm sort of over that. I've never gone to a retreat, but it sounds like fun. Deborah, it is. And then, do you know what? I don't know very many people that have gone to a retreat and not had a fabulous time. I mean, yeah. And not enjoyed enjoyed the meeting new people. And I don't know. Has anyone on the chat ever gone to a retreat and not enjoyed it? I mean, don't get me wrong. Sometimes you can go to retreats and there might be a little bit of drama that you don't like. But I don't think I've ever spoken to anyone that's ever gone to a retreat and has just sort of said, I hated every minute of it. Because I think once once you found like a little group of people, because even when you go to these retreats, it's very few places that you can go to where there's there's not like a table that's big enough for everybody. So you always end up sitting on small in smaller groups. So even if even if you're not like a, a massive people person, if you just sit on your table and you're in like a table of just six people, it's still a small group. It's just the walking through the door bit that can be a bit intimidating and overwhelming and the noise level in the room. So if you've got like a big retreat where there's lots of people, like I can imagine that StitchCon and places like that are like it, um, where it's just really loud, even when you're sort of sat on your little group. I think at that point, it can be, yeah, you might need to go back to your room and just have a bit of time out, but not overwhelming, if you know what I mean. Cross-stitch midwife, <laughs> late to the party. Hello, my lovely, welcome to the stream. Have you been working? Just doing a bit of glitter village before bed. Oh, you know. I, I mean, I keep looking at the clock because it's like it's half past, half past nine now. And I'm thinking, at what point should I go and go to go and sort myself out? Because my, 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 my thread organising is not going very well. I'm sort of making a bit of a pig's ear of it, if I'm completely honest with you. In fact, I'm sort of done with that. I'm bored with that now. It's annoying me because it keeps getting all tangled. I need some... See, this is what I was thinking. I think that there should be a thread sorting service, don't you? Don't you think that there should be a thread sorting service that we can send all our threads to and they sort them all out into whatever our preferred... Whatever our preferred method is and you just send them all off and just they all come back done. That would be fabulous. See, I was talking about career change, but that's not the sort of career that I want because I obviously am not very good at it. <laughs> Hi y'all, I'm just getting here. I said I was starting my first head during our last live, but I'm still kitting up. I don't know. Oh, I didn't know it would take this long. Yeah, the kitting up is the time consumer. Hence the reason why I'm still sitting here with this whole bunch here. And I've still got these ones that I've just done whilst we've been chatting here. Yet there is still half a bag of threads to go. 
So needless to say, there is a lot to be done. There is a lot to be done. They always take longer than you think. Are you using Pattern Keeper on your iPad? I do use Pattern Keeper on my iPad for my full coverages and my long dog samplers. Just signed up for my first retreat, going with a good friend next summer. Supposed to be around 150 people there. Sherry, that sounds like it's gonna be a blast. I don't know what one you're going to, but you will probably find that although there's 150 people there, you're going to be like on small in smaller groups on tables so although there's 150 people there and it seems a bit overwhelming with so many people other than the fact that it's just loud in the room because the number of people that are there you'll probably find that you'll sort of click with like a little group of people which is great i think a retreat would be very fun i just think they're too much money for me right now by the time you factor transportation hotel stay food etc yeah, for some people the budget is is a bit tricky. I mean, um, I mean, most of the retreats over here, I think, in in UK pounds are about. Well, it depends really. I think they're normally about two seventy five for the weekend, including the Friday night. So Friday to Sunday is about two hundred and seventy five pounds. But then you've got to pay for your transport to, to get there and back. Um, so yeah, it does get a bit pricey. But maybe you should think about maybe not so much the whole stitchy weekends, but they do like the stitching days where you can go to like some of the places and just stitch for a day. And if you go as a day delegate, it's normally a, really, it's a lot, lot cheaper. Only retreats I've done are non-stitching related. Can't wait for my first one. Hard to get away these days. My retreats are... Of these lives <laughs> well this is this is like a you know I mean this is I love this I love sitting here stitching and chatting and talking to you all I think it's great I'm sorry you have a diva for a boss it sounds like he's very spoiled but if he's expected you have to provide good fortune yeah you're right Yep, and Charlotte's right. If you feel scared about going to a retreat and being the first one to rock up or, you know, you're, you're scared to walk through the door, you can always ask for a buddy and they'll hook you up with someone. I need a week to recover from how people... from how people it was... or how people it was, but I loved every minute. Yep. Erin, it is one of those things where you sort of sit there and think to yourself, you know, it's... It's lovely. I mean, I always find that when I come back from one of my retreats, when I come back on the Sunday, I'm like, Phew. and I just have to sit down and just sit quietly and do stitching quietly because I tend to find that I've normally talked my little head off and I've had such a blast, but I do need my like time out, if you know what I mean. My third retreat is on Friday have loved everyone, met some lovely people, drank gin and laughed all day. You're not wrong there, are you? I do believe <laughs> we're going to be at the same retreat again this... Yeah, you're going this weekend. I think I'm at the same retreat. So you're going to have more drinking of gin and more laughing all day. <laughs> Probably at my expense. And that's fine because I'm getting used to it now. Teresa, will you take up dancing again once your hip heals? I would love to. I'll be honest with you. Dancing is very expensive, people. It's, it's not the cheapest thing in the world. Um, I would love to go back and do dancing. But in all honesty, the, the struggle is what I was saying earlier about um, partnering. Because the partner that I did have, he no longer is dancing. So I'd need to find someone else. But it would need to be someone that my husband is happy with as well. I could bribe my ch my children to do all that for you, Teresa. What a great idea. Do you, what, you, what, your children want to sit here and mess around with my floss? Really? I love the thread process and, and kit making. I do it more than stitching. Really? 
Oh, I'm the complete opposite. I just want to get on with the stitching. I'm not into this whole kitten thing. The kitten thing bores me to death. Maybe I should send all my stuff to you and you can kit mine for me. <laughs> Silver says, I have a to buy or not to buy situation. Also would love to go to a retreat, but I do not think I could afford one. Oh, Silver. Well, what about if you went as a day delegate at one of the retreats? The day delegates are like, I don't know, anywhere between 30 and 50 pounds. You stay for the day, you just stitch for the day, and you normally have lunch. And, and you just get to have a little feel for it. But at least that way, you get to actually have physical stitchy time in a room. And what's the buy or not to buy situation? We need to know what that is. Teresa, I'm going to say nighty night, everyone. Film night with hubby. Louisa, have a lovely film night with hubby. And thank you for joining the stream. We should do a Teresa stitching retreat. <laughs> Well, there is the Essex Needles Retreat, which is one of mine. But then you'd have to come all the way to Essex. It's a long way to come for some of you. Definitely a long way to come. Although, I must admit, uh, me and a couple of the girls, we, we are looking at possibly coming out to the States. We're, like, we're trying to find a retreat that's affordable and available to give us the time to get on the list and to get a place and to be somewhere where we can go off and do other things. Because obviously we can't just come over for three days for a retreat. We'd have to come for like a week or ten days. So we are we are trying to find one where we could actually come over and do a retreat. If the price is right. But again, see? You sit there and say about budget. It's if the price is right. Going to be my first retreat in Canada next year. I booked it for my 50th birthday, which was, which was this year. Oh, Jen at Cat Crafty Creations. Happy 50th birthday. And what a gift to give yourself. It, you, you honestly once you go to a retreat you just like oh they're they're amazing i don't i don't think i've ever been to one where i'm like oh it's put me off forever i've never been put off going to a retreat i'm almost finished with a color thread and i lost it so easy as it was as as if it were a needle <laughs> as it got lost in the threads linda says would feel safe with Teresa. Oh, well, you know, I would not tolerate any bad behaviours at my at my stitching retreat, ever. Um, but to be in all, in all fairness, I don't think I've ever been to a retreat where I've seen really, really bad behaviour. I think there was once when someone had a difference of opinion, but it was literally the organisers had it squashed within a minute and everything was everything was fine. I tend to need the sleep after a retreat. I'm not surprised, Charlotte. You do so much stitching, sweetie. <laughs> I'd need the sleep as well. I'm definitely a night owl. Retreats, some with fun in my... Well, see, that's the good thing about when you go to the retreats. When you go to the retreats, inevitably, you've got what I call your early birds and then you've got your night owls. So you'll have some that will be still be stitching at sort of two and three o'clock in the morning and then you'll have the early birds like me who gets up and is in the stitching room by 6 a.m. So, yeah, there's a great range of people. And then that way, sometimes, the people that you were stitching with, they may leave, but then there'll be people on other, other tables. But because it goes quiet, all of a sudden, like all the conversations start going across tables. Anyone that's been to a retreat knows what I mean, but it's it's true. It's it's so much fun. Hannah says, went to my first retreat last Sunday, met some lovely people and felt no guilt at indulging myself. Good for you, because that's the whole point. It is is that the weekend is for you. What you do with that weekend is completely down to you. You know, you could be as sociable or as introvert as you like. Um, you've just got to go and have fun. Agree, love stitching more than knitting. Oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry, not knitting. Didn't say that. Sorry for the knitters out there. Agree, love stitching more than kitting. I usually let others kit for me. So I know I've got a lot of duplicate floss. <laughs> What's this? Would love... Would love it, Teresa. I have a wall of kitted things. It's fun for me, but I can't wait for a, for a few finishes. Yeah. 
Scarlett says, if you ever dance again, please do take some video clips so we can see. I'm sure it's lovely. I think you had said you scored very well in tests previously. I did, but I'm still in the beginners. I'm, I'm, not like a, I'm not like a gold or even a silver. I'm sort of, I was just working on my bronze. Um, but yeah, I mean, I do miss it. I'll be honest with you. I do miss it and I did absolutely love it, but yeah. You need to have the right partner. I do not know if I want to purchase a kit now and wait until the end of November before I can buy again or not. It's an art to see, dear Alice. I have the pattern and I have had for two years. <laughs> so you're in the buy or not to buy dilemma. The answer is always buy it. <laughs> I like that, Gina. Or Jenna, sorry. What about StitchCon? StitchCon's full, isn't it? So we couldn't go to StitchCon, and that's very, very big. I think even I think I would even feel a bit overwhelmed there. Karen says, "Gotta go, my dear. I will watch the rest later. Take care. Bye, Karen, my lovely. Thank you for joining the stream. No doubt we'll chat online in the next sort of few days." Emma Rose says, "Trees are. I live in Basildon, in Essex, so that would be great for me." Emma, why are you not coming to the Essex Needles Retreat, sweetie? It's at Stansted Airport. So it's an easy one to get to. Although I say that, do you drive, Emma? Are you a driver? If not, you can get there by train, but it would mean going through London. But to be honest, if you're in Basildon, you wanted to come, there's nothing There's nothing stopping me swinging by to come and pick you up because you know I'm like literally just down the road from you. I could come and get you and you could come with me. There will be a retreat in Philadelphia next fall. You could do Philly and New York City being held by Rebel's, Rebel Stitcher. Oh, there's, there's one. Gina, make a note of these because Gina Stitches, the one in the chat, is Gina that we're, 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 there's me, Ellie and Gina and we're all thinking about going out to the States. So Gina, make a note of that. I barely stitched at the Chatelaine retreat. Charlotte, yeah, well, you say that, but you still stitch more than I do. I'm the one that barely stitches when I go to a retreat. Erin's <gasps> got her final bead in and she's got a finish. Oh, clap some love in the chat for a finish. Well done, Erin, see? And we sat here and kept you company for the whole of that. That's a lot of beads. I must have talked a lot, a lot, a lot. Emma says, I'm a night owl. That's fine. There's plenty of night owls. Plenty of night owls at the retreat. Oh, Katie, is there information on the retreat anywhere? I'm an hour from Philly. Oh, Karen's an hour from Philly as well. Maybe that is a good choice then. Oh, we'll have to get some information about that and I'll, I'll touch base with Karen. Come next year to Steel City Stitchers Retreat. It's in Pittsburgh. Pennsylvania in March. Email them to get on the list, maybe. So that's a good idea as well. I need to look that one up. So Gina, there's another one. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, the Steel City Stitchers. See, they're, they're coming thick and fast now, people. Thick and fast. Oh, wow. Um... StitchCon is full. I'm going to the weekend this week. So Emma says I can't drive. Emma, if you wanted to go to the Essex Needles, if, if you ever wanted to come to one of the Essex Needles retreat, you just need to get on the Facebook group, sweetie. And if you need a lift, you can come with me because I'm driving. The only thing is you would have to go for the same days that I go. And I normally go for the Friday to the Sunday. So, yeah. If you would, if you want to go to the retreat and you just you just needed a lift, you can come with me. I can come, I can swing by Basildon and come and pick you up. I love this community, so friendly. You need a stitchy group. You're totally right. It's, it's, it's the best group of people ever, isn't it? Still here. I'm checking out the one in Philly and Pittsburgh. No, off hubby just got dinner. <laughs> Bye, Karen. <laughs> talk to me. Talk to me offline about Philly and Pittsburgh. You need to tell me where they are because if I can, if I can come to, come to the states, do a retreat, and see some sights, 
and see Karen the needle bug, then it's it's the most perfect trip ever. So, right, people, it's that time. It's five to ten in the UK. I've got to get up in the morning for work. The girls have been very patient and very well behaved, um, but I think they're. I think they need to go out and I think they want cuddles with their mummy now. So I've had an absolute blast. And even though I did stitch and then I'd done a bit of this and then I sat and chatted, it's been totally, totally lovely. And to be able to concentrate on the chat because I always feel that I'm like read one, two and then miss a few. So yeah, thank you so, so much. And oh, Julia, you're such a lovely, lovely, lovely lady. Thank you so much for the super chat. It will pop up in a minute because it's on a go slow. There we go. Thank you for the for the super chat. That, mwah, love you all. Thank you ever so much for keeping me occupied. Thank you for great conversation. Thank you for you just because you're you. And thank you for joining the stream. So hopefully we'll be able to get another one next weekend. But if not, definitely the weekend after. In fact, no, I can't do live next weekend. No live next weekend because I'm off at a stitching retreat. The weekend after, I promise, I, I will do I, I will do a stitch with me live. So no live next week, but the week after there will be. So thank you so so much. Until next time, people. Bye bye for now.